You know, I watched my wife work all day getting 30 bags together for you ungrateful sons of bitches. And all I can hear is criticize, criticize, criticize. From now on, don't ask me or mine for nothing. Damn. Now, knowing you. I don't know it. You're militant enough to not have seen this film. Okay. <laughs> Okay, because <laughs> until you said wife, I thought it was a Jennifer Lewis line. Um, so I don't. It doesn't. It's not. It's you major ain't pain. got nothing better to do. It's not major pain. And come into Bill Sharp's town and show your ass. No, I don't know it. <laughs> I don't know Bill Sharp's town. <sighs> All right. Well, hey guys, welcome to another episode of Three. All right, it's okay. I don't have to know it. I am Jamie Fox, and I am Francesca Ramsey. Uh, welcome. We're back at it again. Congratulations to Francesca Ramsey. Yeah, she was my Black Excellence for this week. I put her down just in case you had a list of like I don't know some overachieving eight year olds or something but yeah well, i actually had a list of several people including Br- uh, francesca so we can just start black excellence with her okay so yeah if you haven't already heard the news our friend francesca ramsey has written her first book it is available for a pre-order right now it was like the first thing i did was ran uh to pre-order this book but i am just so excited so proud of her so happy for her it's called well that escalated quickly which it's a great name. It's just right. It just fits her. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. So, yay, go Cheska Lee. Out here doing big, big things. So proud of you. And the cover is great. Yeah, it's so cute, and I can't wait to read it. And she's just so super, super smart and funny, and everything she does is amazing. So, yay, go friend. Also, congratulations to everybody over at uh, the Black Panther Enterprise. Black Panther had uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe's highest selling pre-sale tickets that is nuts. for the 24 hours uh, out of all of the films. That is nuts. Out of all of the movies that they've released in 10 years. That includes Marvel Wonder Woman? Line. Wonder Woman is DC. This oh, is Marvel. okay. So but sure, them too. Probably Wanda, still. Probably beats. still Wonder Woman. So how many tickets did you buy? I bought uh, so far 12. <laughs> Why don't you just rent a theater? You, just- you know, I thought about that. <laughs> I did. Um, I should have known. I've got tickets at one for every night. Okay. Of okay. that weekend. Right. No, of course, of course. Um, some for two theaters in like the same night. I don't know how this is going to work. <laughs> how many times um, do you think you need to physically so be? So you're like in New York. <laughs> Yeah, you need to do a giveaway. And you go to a theater and you like <laughs> see two seats or four seats and like who didn't come to Black Panther? Who the fuck? It's probably me and I couldn't make it because oh I'm at some other God. theater watching it or whatever. But <laughs> you are a mess. I bought a lot of tickets. I haven't bought any yet because I'm trying to figure out what is the best day and time to go without hearing a bunch of people talking back at the screen. And I don't. Okay, so no, if that's going to be feasible. If you want to wait. I would say probably Monday, Tuesday. No, I have to go Matt before May. I have to go before our anniversary well, show because I can't be the only one well, <laughs> who bless. hasn't seen it. So <laughs> I have to go, but I don't. I just I can't go to like a theater that nobody goes to and do it Friday like morning or afternoon. I'm gonna have to go to like the ten fifteen a.m. movie show and then literally nobody else goes to because. So my schedule is. I got like an opening night fan event, whatever ticket, which really means they're going to show you, you the movie like an hour or three hours or whatever before it comes out. And then you get like popcorn. Okay. <laughs> like, but still. But still. Right. Um, so I've got that at like a regular AMC and then I got an iPick ticket so I can watch it again and get drunk. Then I'm going to go. Oh, duh. I'm just go get drunk. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Then I'm going to go to. Um, okay, so I think Friday or maybe Saturday before the show, I got tickets for Magic Johnson just so I could be among us. Okay, see, that's where exactly where I'm not going. But I would have already seen it two to three times by then anyway. Right. So at that point, it is so simply the for the experience right. of watching it with niggas. <laughs> because that is important to me as well. Um, and where mm. else but the the Right, the no, you have to go to the, the, the Magic, Magic Johnson. The Magic. You have to. Niggas um, is going to be in costume and everything. Absolutely. Costume. 
that's plane festive. for the I first like time that. in their lives, probably. I do like that. I'm sure the babies will be there, and I'll be okay. Now, see, that would be fun, cute to see for people once. dress their kids up as those characters in that uh, book, because you know I'm clearly showing my ignorance All right. right now. So the point is, <laughs> I'm going. You save me! Congratulations to everybody! I can't wait. I know that this movie is going to punch the numbers yeah and that we'll be like able it. to have a great time on globe well i'm definitely going now i just need to pick a, a nice matinee where i can go get drunk in the theater i pick probably always with some good, white people is always a good first. decision because the theaters are smaller mm-hmm. and like i said most people don't bring um like children, children or whatever right. like most people are just there to kind of like get fucked up but i've had mostly decent experiences in those theaters which is why i usually go yeah okay um also speaking of black superheroes um congratulations i've heard nothing but great things about the black lightning premiere oh yeah um, that was last night i actually watched it today on amazon I didn't get to, to watch it live when it aired or whatever, but I'm caught. I'm catching up. I'll be along with the with the season. I'm thinking maybe I'll continue to watch it on Amazon because it doesn't have the CW logo on it, so that feels more refreshing to me. I haven't forgiven the CW. Let's take it back. Just do a quick history lesson. The, the CW WB. canceled the game. When they turned into the CW oh, yes. and were feeling their real Caucasian beat. I've said for the longest time that I felt like the CW stood for crackers worldwide, but I've healed from then. The point is that back then in my anger, the CW, I mean, the game was like a spinoff of Girlfriends. It was on, you know, the UPN and WB used to be two different girls. And then they decided to come together and create the CW. And then the CW decided they wanted to get rid of all of their nigga programming. Right. I do and talk about, this. we don't want to have any half hour sit comes we're focusing on more hour-long content and stuff blah 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 white dramas and everybody over there with Mara Brocka kill and them at the game were like okay well look we'll punch it up they did like the last episode or whatever of that season it was an hour long they took out the laugh track or whatever and like we can keep up with all of those things too no we don't want your nigger thing right and so <laughs> asked them never forgave them i watched the rest of gossip girl and then i told them to fuck off Wasn't so that- doesn't what is that white show that white people love that I think was on the was it on the CW? Mm-hmm. A white single mother and her daughter. Uh, that's and they just talk to each other Gilmore in real dry girls. tones all the time. Yes, Gilmore oh, Girls. I think the Gilmore Girls. I think the Gilmore Girls was actually on WB. Oh, I don't oh, know if damn! It made it to. I think that may have. I don't remember. I wasn't really watching the game like that, but I remember niggas when it got picked up I by BT. It. Everybody was like, "Here we fucking go!" And there it went. And there it went. <laughs> and there it went. <laughs> it was truly dreadful on BT. Anyway, the yeah, point yeah. is, but back to I don't know if they've had a show on the CW that ha- that's like centered around a black family or cast since the game. Y'all can correct me tomorrow if I'm wrong, but I feel like Black Lightning is definitely like the first show that they've had on that network that centered around a black family and everything like that. And these niggas were blowing up police cars on episode one. So I'm, um, you know, I'm 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 satisfied really? with what I watched. Okay. Um I'm really excited to see the girl you know what? For those of y'all who don't even know what Black Lightning is. Yeah, I haven't seen it. So. Great show. If you like Luke Cage, you'll probably like Black Lightning as well. Scooter from Living Single is still fine. He's still fine. Oh I'm here to God. tell you that he's still fine. We were just so, talking about him the other day. He is still fine. Nothing. I mean, Scooter really got better. He is actually finer. He with looks, age. Yes. Why? Oh, he looks good. So I couldn't know he was on Black Lightning. All right. Yeah, he's the titular character. Oh. Shooting lightning out of his hands and stands. I love that word. So, okay, I'm congratulations to them. Really excited to see where this uh, series goes, and that it's not like another teen drama about angst and you know not getting a call back or whatever else. Place for those two, but you know, variety. Also. Shout out to all of the winners at the NAACCP Image Awards. Ava DuVernay was Entertainer of the Year. Um, I mean, Blackish won pretty much everything. So, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. that. Um, Omari Hardwick, Hardwick won for Power, which I feel like that's the first time I'm seeing him get an award for. Probably so. Probably not his first award for that role, but I feel like it's the first one I'm seeing, and he deserves it. He mm-hmm. acts himself on that show. Okay. Jay Ellis won for Insecure. 
JL is one for that. <laughs> you know what? Let me not say Healing. <laughs> it is all about healing. Season three. They're that man is it. not Lawrence. It is all about healing. <laughs> I said, I didn't say anything about Lawrence. Right. <laughs> I had to stop myself. Like, don't go off. Of- it is okay. He is a separate person from that character. Of course, of course, my sis, Marseille Martin, swept. I mean, just I wasn't to be ready. the smooth child among all of these grown ass women, and just yes. Well, when she stepped out things. on the carpet, like, hello, I know y'all met me as a little girl, but I am not she anymore. I was just like, wait a minute, she's such a beautiful young lady, and then came she right through dressed. and won the category. Like, oh hey, girls, I'm just here to take that green. Number. My things. Oh, she looks so good. She I looks said, so- I <laughs> got to be seen green. Yes, I saw you doing the most. On it her just Instagram. gave me the whiz. I stand for her. She's no, everything. she's everything. She is. Um, who else? Queen Latifah won things. The real one outstanding talk series. That was interesting. Doc McStuffins. What? One outstanding children's program. See, this is why we need the Image Awards. Ooh, Kayla McLaughlin won for Stranger Things. Oh, the I was about to say, who's that? But he's the little black boy on Stranger Things. <laughs> SZA won for Outstanding New Artist. Oh, as Bruno should've. Mars won for Outstanding Male. Yay. Great. Any other winners? Mary J. Blige won for Outstanding <laughs> Female. Oh, congrats to Mary and her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Absolutely. You know, on her birthday, too. It's all about collecting your what things. What a day that was. 2018. Yeah, and she truly deserved. Come get your things. So, yes. You can look at the literary works, winners and things. I'm sure that's your tea. <laughs> yeah, I'll go, I'll go look that up because you don't care. Black winners and yes. excellent things. Congratulations, everybody. You know, you're doing awesome. Now... On to the mess. On to the garbage. This week in Hot Tops and Bridge of God damn you! Oh my God. You know, just one for the 18th. You <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> wow. I really should have Wow. Feel- <laughs> wow, I you that. are trash. You actually came out of yourself. You are trash. <laughs> So, all right. So we're oh start. wow! See, this is why Just you lose at Monopoly, and you're always gonna lose no. at Monopoly because the Lord don't like the way no, you. No, the Lord doesn't like his stinginess. If that was the case, then I would be the one cooperate. losing. But I do not. No, that is why. No, not. yes, because no, you're stingy. No, that's, that's what not, it is. No, mm-mm. that is exactly what no, it is. You hold not. on to everything. You are stank. You, you like yell you in people's ears. Are the reason why Monopoly don't end. No, yes, that is why. No, it is. Monopoly is the longest game I'm just game not a earth. fool when it comes down to strategizing and winning the game. But see, the you fact also, that you keep calling in my ears like that, that's why the Lord won't let you prosper with, with these board games. No, that's fine. And I got categories now, too. You can come get it whenever you want that's to. That's fine as well. You can come get it whenever you want That is fine and it's perfectly to. okay for, with me. <laughs> that's fine. Thanks a bunch. Yes. Um, Hallelujah. So, one Jack A. Harry... Okay. Was on the Steve Harvey show, which he didn't deserve. But you know what? He's just not about being paid. <laughs> I mean, Queen Jack Hay was on there right. and confirmed that um, there is a sister sister reboot in the in the making. She's. Uh, this is something that Tia and Tamara have been like whispering, hinting weird stuff at, about, yeah, like for a while. So, I don't, like, nothing has been released in terms of, like, official confirmation or press stuff from a network or anything like Mm -hmm, that. mm -hmm. But, I mean, I believe it. It seems like most people who are involved in the show are down to do it. It seems like there's enough interest in it. Where's Ray? Did Ray say yes? I haven't heard anything about Ray Ray saying yes. Not me Googling Ray Campbell. What is this man's name? What is this man's name? (laughs) I'm just hoping that if this does happen, that they take a cue from what we discussed, which is, remember I said on the show that I feel like a lot of these shows that were centered around kids or whatever, like younger audiences Mm -hmm. that grew with us and stuff, like, I feel like they should just kind of be a more adult sitcom now. Right. Because the people who watched it are adults. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like the kids, like you trying you to now really get your kids your to kids. watch. <laughs> right. It's, they're not going to be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, sister, sister. I feel like a good portion of the time, kids would rather watch the original one if you got it on DVD uh, or something. Yeah, because it's better. It because it's almost always better. That's why Full House is, the new Full House is trash, but the new That's So Raven is not. Right. I think that's that's a big difference. Like the focus is still Raven and Chelsea's friendship, you know, and even though they're doing something similar with like the whole children, and right, and all and, that, yeah. the Full House show is about them little kids. Like it is about them children. They're and like season three. I'm, do- I'm somebody's lost. watching it. <laughs> White people in flyover states must love it. Let me tell you something. Because <laughs> the like, rest of us. <laughs> I swear I'm, they're putting that shit on for the Real Housewives I of Dallas. Cannot do it. Like the Real Housewives of Dallas put that shit on the, their tablets for their babies to watch. Oh man, it I, has to be like wow. So there's a Real Housewives of Dallas. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I had no idea. I watched that was either. Good. Was it? Oh yeah, they were horrible. Well, let me tell you what I'm not looking at. I I tried two or three episodes of that new Full House and I couldn't do it. I think I got through like half of the premiere episode and I just knew it was not for me. Right. No, it isn't. It's not. It just isn't very well done. So I agree. Like if they're going to bring sister, sister back, then make it about them four people that we cared about, you know, absolutely primarily. And then find Roger to come back in here. (laughs) What if Roger is one of their husbands or baby he daddy? Be. He can't be married. That to might him. actually be interesting. I would like a baby, baby daddy, daddy might be. It would be Tamara. Tia had her shit to. Well, see, that's a great plot twist. Make exactly. it Tia instead of Tamara. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but when you think about it, you're like, which one of them got drunk in college and called Roger? I just don't want to see nothing about them having twins of their own. And and oh, stop. or each of them has quadruplets, corny, right? And it's just like brother squared. And it's a chance to bring Bianca Lawson back. She was that really bitchy schoolmate, oh, yeah. classmate of theirs. Throwback. I what forgot all name? about. I forgot oh, her name. Don't give me the line. They had what was that episode where they had to do like a video project, and Tia wanted to lie all on hers and make her family seem all interesting. And Bianca Lawson's character, her daddy had like hired a whole film yeah. crew and. <laughs> <laughs> she was like one of the the first bullies of the series. Yeah. Oh wow! Yes. I forgot all about her. Bring Bianca Gabrielle Lawson Union was too. a friend. She should have a cameo. Yes. Gabrielle Union was a friend on all the. Taraji shows. was one of the friends. What? Of sister. Shut up. Yes. Okay, I'm mad. I don't remember that. And then there was Diavion in like the late when they were in college. I loved. Diavion. I just love that name. Where did they get that name from? Diavion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to spell it. I don't, I don't know if you're going to try. Fuck it. So, yes. yeah, do something like that. That would be fun. I'm down for a sister-sister reboot if it follows the the sisters mm-hmm. and right. their parents. And even if they have kids, that's cool, too. Right. I anticipate that they will yes. have children. <laughs> but, I mean, they have them in real life. So. Right. I see it, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm all for it. I really loved Sister Sister. That's why Tamara was always my favorite and still my favorite twin, honestly, because she was my favorite twin on the show. Mm, which one is married to the Republican white man? Tamara is. Oh, right. So, no, she's not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to be fair, she never was. I always liked Tia's bookish ass. I always liked Tamara more because was she like, was lit and had fun. Your goofy sister is always getting you into some shit. She lied. And <laughs> right? She was fun. Where did it, wouldn't they ended up in Chicago one time? Or yes, they were going to. Oh my God, was this a Boys to Men concert? Somewhere they was. What going. What concert were they going to? But and they, they were got getting stranded. a ride with somebody. What happened? Sister, sister was so good. Or were? They, oh. Ooh, and when they would sing sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, the talent show with Roger when they did. Uh, Do you love me? I can really move. In their little matching velvet dresses. <laughs> yes. See, now I just want to watch oh, all the old God. episodes. I own the series. <laughs> of course you do. Of course I do. <laughs> it's a classic. All right. All right. Well, interested to see what happens with that. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Lots of trash. Um, so Chris Brown got in trouble for. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and finish the sentence, guys. So last month, he uh, uploaded a, a photo or a video 
of his daughter royalty holding a, a new pet that Chris got for himself, apparently, which was a capuchin monkey <laughs> named Fiji. A monkey? Yes. You know the little monkeys like from Ace Ventura and like the grinder oh. organ? Oh, oh. Those cute ones. I didn't know you could just buy them. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the trouble. Oh, okay. <laughs> So he got in like white people Peter type trouble. I guess. Okay. So uh, I'm sure, especially when you're wealthy, there are plenty of places where you can just go and give somebody your money and yeah. give money and they'll give you a monkey back. Right. If you have enough money, you can do that with anything. Really? Tigers, monkeys. Children, organs. You can do anything with enough cash. Doesn't mean it's always legal. Yeah, no. So apparently he broke some sort of law uh restrict owning a restricted species without a permit so you can own this monkey mm-hmm. but you have to have legal documentation for right. it right okay obviously because it is not a pomeranian some kind of right <laughs> wild animal <laughs> this isn't just a cocker spaniel that you found on the street and simple google would tell you like all kinds of like the risks and things that you're signing up for mm-hmm. just owning the monkey whether you have the paperwork or not i was just about to ask if it was safe for her to just be holding that monkey probably anyway. not. but <laughs> I mean, it was like a baby, baby monkey, you know, so it wasn't like, oh, okay. I don't know, it would have hurt her or something. It wasn't like going to like claw at her face. And no, I don't think so. Okay. It's not like that. They're adorable. But I, okay. He, they, once the internet and enough people mm-hmm. caught wind of him and his, you know, monkey friendship, <laughs> the authorities were contacted, of course, Damn. and got a search warrant so that it could go in and scoop Fiji up. Wow. Chris Brown willingly, Niggas according to reports, <laughs> he snitched on his fucking self. You bought the right. Monkey. Why would you put that you on may Snapchat not have the monkey or whatever? Like, you... <laughs> I just don't know why it was on the internet. So he gave them Fiji back. Hopefully, it didn't break royalty's heart because oh. I can't imagine that she was not having the time of her life with this fucking monkey, right. with bananas and things. And, and no, a stuffed one that looks just like it is not going to be the right. same. And... Bring Chris, 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 Chris. Let me holler at you. Yeah. <laughs> so. What is the problem? Get the monkey back. I don't understand. On Tuesday, me and Fiji was chilling. I don't. And then I wake up today and you got me this Build-A-Bear nonsense. Where is I Fiji? I don't. I've had a live monkey and I won't be satisfied with anything <laughs> else. <laughs> now they're saying that he, you know, could be looking at jail time and whatever else for misdemeanor crime or something, which jail I'm sure time. will go. It's not that deep. I just really don't right. think it is. I'm sure it'll be fine. But now, you know, you may not just go out and buy yeah. wild animals just because well, this they're is, cute. Yeah, no, you cannot do that. You cannot just be like, oh, I like the way that looks. How much? <laughs> A couple grand? No problem. Like, it doesn't work like that. But this is the type of trouble. If Chris Brown has to get in trouble, then this is the, the kind I want to see. Something that ultimately, yes. Yes. you know, no young women are going to file a lawsuit about. <laughs> no club owners are going to try to get their restitution. Absolutely. <laughs> this is what I like to see I'm from okay Chris with as this. far as cutting up is concerned. Yeah. It wasn't even the typical somebody found a gun in your carry on right. or something <laughs> like that. You can get right. in trouble for that all the time. Just buying a monkey you ain't supposed to have. Yeah, that's so, who cares? Right. The worst that's gonna happen, like we said, is royalty's gonna be pissed at you. <laughs> right. You got to deal with royalty having an attitude. And honestly, like just a couple of noun later, <laughs> for a few days straight, she's three. <laughs> <laughs> she will forget all about Fiji. Girl, if you don't sit down and take these Starbursts. <laughs> Chris It'll honestly right. was probably like, N- Michael had bubbles. So. Right. I don't. And honestly, Michael. I was thinking about bubbles during the whole story. Michael so. certainly had paperwork for bubbles. I would have thought would so also. So. I feel like white people probably made sure that. I mean, didn't he have a whole damn jungle? M- I bubbles, feel like that nigga had a lot of monkeys. <laughs> bubbles had a wardrobe. <laughs> I thought Bubbles had a whole community worth of monkeys there with him. I thought he had, like, friends. He was in a wildlife preserve or something the other day. I'm pretty sure Bubbles died, like, a couple years ago. Uh, and there was some video. Don't see. No. no. There was a... You shouldn't you know, say it because you it's can't okay. get it out without laughing. <laughs> there was a video of Latoya. Like, she went to go visit him. Like, no. he was, like, grown. And she was, like... Like weeping. Did you see that video? No. She was like weeping. Like, I think he remembers me. Like, probably so cute. The she said that to the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <know. laughs> My thing is like 
I was like, I've seen a lot of niggas. Homegirl who wrote into the show about, you know, her boyfriend trying to get, are you trying to get a snake and your boyfriend ain't about it? Tell that nigga, at least I don't want a fucking monkey. Because when I tell you, I want neither. Right. To be honest with you. But I, I, I don't want a monkey in my house. Monkeys are too much like having kids. That's what I'm saying. They, they are too just smart. just like a human. They have opposable yeah, thumbs. No, they, can't. they are quite They're smart. They're going to get in your shit. <laughs> Hell no. I watched enough National Geographic in my day. And yeah. I love monkeys, especially these. Mm-hmm. They will not be in my home. That girl actually emailed us back and said she knew we was going to say that about the snakes. Yeah, I don't know what you And mean. she tried to compromise with her boyfriend and was like, you know, I just want a reptile. But he just refuses. Like, no amphibians at I all. I disagree with everything. <laughs> like, But she's saying, you know, I don't, I don't want a dog because you have to pay those too much attention. With a reptile, I can just drop some food in the aquarium and go to school all day and not be worried about why it. Why don't you just go to PetSmart when you bored and just look at them? Well, why not? Why she can't just have one in the house then? Because why? I don't mind nothing in an aquarium now. You know what my compromise would be if I was just in love and I guess that's <laughs> what you're supposed to do? Meet people halfway? Yes! Oh, ugh, relationships! Take that terrarium or whatever the fuck you call them shits and put it outside. Okay, no. Put it outside. Decorate a little spot for that motherfucker out. I in think the she should be allowed to have a lizard. Absolutely not. I don't mind lizards and, and lizards in my house have to die. Iguanas and things like that. Nope. I don't mind them niggas. It's nope. anything that can move without legs or wings. I will do an iguana or something like that over a snake any day of the fucking yeah, week. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think but that's, that's like, a fair compromise. I do, especially because you really don't have to do that much with them niggas. They pretty much take care of themselves. You have to feed them like bugs. Well, I mean, dropping so now I some got bugs and lizards in the dropping house. Dropping dead bugs into an aquarium is Who not that dead? bad. It's not, that is not that bad. Okay. Uh, uh, hold on. I know this is not coming from you. All the bending over backwards you have to do for Link. <laughs> Link is a dog. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Dogs are that everything. is work. But that is work. You have and to. And it like, pays off because dogs are affectionate. Dogs have unconditional love for you most of the time. Well, iguanas might. They. Might, I don't know. They might. Might get I don't give a fuck warm blooded when they near you. I don't I grew know. Up in Miami, oh, fucking well. Florida. If so I want to see iguanas, iguana. I could walk to the park. <laughs> Just because you can just was name y'all. one, the bitch is gonna be there again next week. Like just because it's y'all's natural habitat pet, don't mean interested. other people can't have. One. No, <laughs> it's gonna be a zero. Well, good luck. Keep to them her. in the backyard Regardless. where lizards belong, and we're cool. Really? Keep people still keep dogs outside. Well, so, I mean, but that's different because dogs be too damn big to come in the house. Not them little tiny purse size dogs for lizards. Not not nowhere near as damn big Iguanas as most dogs. Iguanas are the great dame. But if lizards. you saw an iguana that was link size, you would have a fucking fit. I have seen iguanas <laughs> link size. <laughs> All right, bigger. you know what? Never, I'm not even trying to get you to, in their natural it's not even habitat. My pet. I don't even care. Anyway, Chris gave them back their monkey, and Royalty's probably pissed, but she'll be fine. She just needs like a yeah Milky Way. A little time to get over it. So, um, Tony Braxton uh, released a smoking new track called Hardaway featuring Birdman. You listen to that? I like it. What? (laughs) You like it? So, here's the thing I didn't get as far into the song to like far enough to hear Birdman because I'm not interested. I've never actually been interested in anything that comes out of Birdman's mouth unless it is on a song featuring somebody that I am interested in. Okay. Which Birdman has been lucky, lucky enough to say. Mm-hmm. For I feel like the majority of his career, he's had Wayne on a record, he's had Drake on a record, or somebody else that I actually yeah, no, he's like. been really fortunate in that way. Um, for for someone of like the magnitude and regality of a Tony Braxton, wow, this is trash. Like for like <laughs> like if you're looking at Tony Braxton from the Grammy Award, "Unbreak My Heart." You know, R and B legend era. Every time I hear "Unbreak My Heart," I think about Patty Lahell and "Unbounce My Check." <laughs> Say I'm not in debt. She's horrible. <laughs> I lived for all of those remixes. Honestly. I will never forget. I will never. Anyway, I can't believe you really listened to this song. I, are you kidding me? First of all, she barely like claims the nigga. She doesn't really claim the nigga at all. But here she is with him everywhere, and now they have a song together. Of course, it's like 
within the first eight seconds, I hear, we got London on the track. I said, of course we do. (laughs) Sure. I I heard about this song and then I tried my hardest to forget about it. You know what it is? It reminds me of that ghetto ass um, tiny song that you and Dustin and everybody love so much. What? But like trap infused. What the fuck you gonna do? Yes. Really? It gives me that. Like oh, it's just like a it. weird, slow, like ghetto bop. I don't know if we have the clearance to do this. Oh, okay. Birdman well, is not. Well, four seconds is not long enough to get sued over. No, it's so. just like. Okay. Hmm. You know what? I mean, I do like the beat. It's Tony Braxton on a trap beat. Okay. Like, it's cute. If she would have taken Birdman up, Birdman should have called Nicki Minaj if, if she, like, responds to his his messages and had her do this. <laughs> then it probably would have been lit. Um, <sighs> but I just can't co-sign Birdman, especially in, when it involves Tony Braxton. Right. I, I, I just, I won't do that. Okay. Um, well, I will listen to it later, I guess. I feel like if you have enough wine and, like, a J... <laughs> And you play this like at a smooth evening yeah, when you're like, scene. you've taken your bra. Yeah. <laughs> you are going to live. That's exactly what I was picturing, actually. So. Me at home, titties naturally sloping. Right. <laughs> with some wine and some weed being like, let me listen to this new Tony like, Rex thing. And I really didn't like get into it enough to know what it is about. Okay. But if it's like a breakup song, then Well, that's according even to better. the lyrics, it looks, no, I think it's a, he ain't shit, but he took my heart away. Like... He took my heart away, right. and now I'm happy. Okay, well, I just won't I pay guess. attention to the lyrics. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's Tony Braxton. <laughs> I like Tony Braxton's voice over a trap beat. I'm into it. Yeah, I will listen to that again. Probably. Not shocked she's going in that direction either. Listen, you do what you got to do to keep up with the young girls. You don't always have to. <sighs> mm. I'm not saying that Tony doesn't. I'm Every saying that artist not does not does. have to do that. You're right. Every like, look at Brandy. I have to. When Brandy was, I'm gonna fall down. You, how does the song go? You put it down. That I'm Chris fall Brown shit. It, yeah. If you put it, it down. down. And I didn't even hate that song. I don't hate it. But I don't think that that performed the way that people thought it would or whatever. Like, yeah. I could just get a regular old singing ass Brandy RB. But then when she did that old school. Begging and pleading. I like that song too, though. I, I like love that. I felt like the issue there was wh- what did Brandy do after those singles? Like, what did Brandy do after that music came out? Where was the. Yeah. Where was the follow up or was she just like, I'm out here doing what I want to do? I I don't even think I know which album. Sue Eleven. Oh, uh, mm, I won't say I liked it a lot, but it wasn't (laughs) as bad as people tried to make it out to be. It definitely wasn't as bad as people made it seem. Right. I I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, But okay. Speaking of Birdman. Whatever. A judge ordered him to release the keys to his $12 million mansion in Miami. I think we spoke about this. Don't really remember. But um, so he got evicted. He defaulted on a loan Mm -hmm. from a company called EMG Transfer Agent. uh, $12 million loan. So I don't know if the house is whatever. The point is (laughs) they didn't get their money. The house was collateral. And so now... Uh, the judge has said, girl, we want the keys. We want the clicker for the garage. We want the lawnmower for the, <laughs> the, <grass. laughs> the furniture is ours. All of it. The lanai, mm-hmm. every chandelier. All that pool equipment. The, You're the, not taking them pool noodles. The marble floor. All of it is ours, girl. Every Don't forget the countertops. <laughs> of all of it. We want it. We're taking the knobs off of the cabinet. <laughs> Everything is ours. I can see that. I mean, you owe these niggas twelve million dollars, or enough to where they're. I mean, you owe the clearly the majority of the loan is <laughs> so is house. in is in default or yes, whatever it's called yes. when you just don't pay your mortgage no more. So this is what happens. Is this is why he's not giving people their money. Well, hell, see, that's the thing. Birdman should have more than enough to pay his bills because he ain't paying nobody else. The story that I've always followed as far as Birdman is concerned is him being wealthy. Like, right. again, I've that never That was his been, whole thing. It's always been, look at how much money we have earned Just as the so cash Just so dumb money rich, right. Look at the how, the type of car that I have. In fact, I have 30 of them. I was always <laughs> a fan of just seeing how rich Birdman was. Yeah, me That's too. what I liked. Yeah. When is Birdman's next episode of Cribs? 
<laughs> that's all I was interested in. So this is it's confusing, heartbreaking. I'm sure that Rick Ross is having a grand old time with no, it. It's not heartbreaking. It isn't. It is. I was just, <laughs> just you know, yeah, trying to do something. I appreciate you being like that. Just upbeat. Um, Escape has announced that they will be returning uh, on tour. With Candy Burris. Oh, okay. I was just about to say, we do not care. <laughs> <laughs> but you said with Candy Burris. <laughs> Once Candy is done with her uh, stretch of shows on Broadway, <laughs> she... <laughs> <laughs> That's real. She really is <laughs> in that show. Um, she will then be returning to the stage with Tiny, Latosh, and Tamik. Okay. Apparently she, I think she just started Chicago or is starting soon. And, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's going into like middle of March. So if oh, you. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a nice little run. A couple months. You didn't get to catch, uh, the great escape tour. Then you can. <laughs> No worries. <laughs> you can catch them when they return to a city near you. I heard that. I guess they're gonna like try to do cities that they didn't get to go to. The that first would make time sense. Around. That would make sense. So I'm just surprised that Candy's actually going back because when I tell you that she has just looked ragged, like she has looked <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> during, what? Like, oh, <laughs> like during the tour itself. Yes, like I've seen so many clips where she just looks completely like the odd man out. Like she just does not want to be there and she's fulfilling yeah. her concur- her contractual obligation mm-hmm. to finish this fucking tour. But touring is such easy money. That's probably it. Because, you know, Candy, Candy is always about her bottom line. And I feel like she yeah. just was like, you know, it's just too easy. The money is too easy to get up on stage with three other girls. And it's just like merch. I'm sure they're selling merch at the sh- at the show. Yeah, they, and, I mean, that would be foolish. If they right. Were. All this other stuff. So it's just kind of like, why not? Why not? So, I mean, she's <laughs> she's been working with bitches she don't like for years. Have on you TV. Want, did you watch so. the most recent episode of Housewives? Was that the one with that that medium? Yes. Uh, 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 Who I just thought was a bitch with an attitude. <laughs> I was like, wait, she's a psychic? I felt like she was doing a lot for the TV. She honestly. was. When she told all them lies on Kenya, I hate to say, I felt just like Portia did. Portia said, "Woo, you see all that? Skip over me, girl. <laughs> I said, oh, Portia, girl, you don't always get it, but when you, you do, you be on it. it. That's true. She was. She... I was like, if this girl is a medium, the producers must have been like, just go in here and do the most. <laughs> like, right. Just go in here and be extra. She it's was just... acting like Contessa's nanny. <laughs> Whoever mama that is. Somebody I'm still mama. calling her Contessa. <laughs> I hate that y'all do that. Why don't y'all like because, Contessa? No, because she is like... No, there's no reason to not like that girl. even go <laughs> but here. But she does go here. She doesn't. She's on the show. And she's always trying to motherfucking hard. Hey! And doing the most interjecting. The nineties party was fun. It was cute. The nineties party thing. was a mess. They literally the almost started The nineties party was a mess boxing. because of them bitches. But the party and then it started so- raining, so God didn't even see it. Like <laughs> no, see, I like her. There's no reason to dislike Contessa. I like her profession. I like her individual her story. <laughs> I like that her husband is a doctor too. I enjoyed. I shouldn't say enjoyed, but I was touched by the scene where her kids wanted to see her and she was upset because she had to work. Yeah. Or whatever. But just as a part of the ensemble, I don't care. Why? She just is lame. No, she. Do- well, she literally does nothing to be like exactly offensive lame. or. She's annoying. I don't have no issues with Contessa. And I'm going to keep calling her Contessa. I feel like, see, you are just so heavenly with this. <laughs> you are just you are just like heavenly. I heavenly like had an attitude with Contessa for no reason. And Fine. that's how you are acting. You <laughs> <laughs> okay. She didn't do nothing. She did to me. She didn't do nothing to nobody. Yeah, you well, just good. have an attitude there with her. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, leave that lady alone. Anyhow, I did watch that last episode. Them bitches don't know how to, like... They just don't know how to have conversations. What a mess. And then here go Nini. I don't have any issues with you, but you just said... But, you, but I'm telling you right now that I don't have any issues with you. Okay, but yesterday on the phone, I don't have any <laughs> But it's like, but literally when we was... When me and Kim was sitting at dinner and you was like uh, i am telling you <laughs> that i don't have anything to say to you i love kim 
versus Kenya Moore. I do. I enjoy that a lot. That is fun. And speaking of Kim and uh, the show, so Kim on that same episode also implied that Candy wanted to eat her vagina. She opened up. The, that was like the first thing she said in the episode was that Candy said something about so wanting here's what to she go said. down on Kim. Ooh. She was talking about that whole shit about Portia and <laughs> Phaedra and their <laughs> lives. And then she says that, um, oh, you know, one thing about Candy... I wouldn't I wouldn't let Candy eat my box or something like she didn't straight up say that Candy tried or whatever. Mm-hmm. She said that she wouldn't let her. And that was it. And then when Sheree was like, don't tell me she offered to do something, something Kim didn't say anything else. I would just like to go on the record to say that Kim has lied on national television several times throughout the entire time that I have known who Kim Zolciak is. OK, OK. Um, Fair. I think that Kim is a troublemaker. I think that she's trash. I think that her lips are disproportionate to the rest of her face. <laughs> and I are. think that honestly, Kim is just trying to do the most right now to stand out and to agitate people so that she can get into arguments to get a big peach. Right. And that isn't even because I'm just a candy stand. I'm calling it the way that I personally see it. Mm-hmm. I think that she's just like, even with Kenya, like you don't even have to start shit with Kenya. She'll give you a reason to argue with her. Just wait. And you went over <laughs> to homegirl's party and when she was talking about when they were talking about her being married or whatever you literally started the whole thing right. and then when she came for you and your your daughter mm-hmm. again you are the one offering people blowjobs right. through Brielle's you mouth said on it. Twitter you said it now girl. you want to fight people Kim's I love trash. it because she get yeah she's good and trash and that's why I love her and Kenya going at it because Kenya is also trash and she gets under Kenya's skin like Kenya is annoyed by her but I feel like a lot of Kim's same being crazy crazy and doing anything to get a peach tactics are just shit that Kenya would have done or has done boxed up in a different person. Like she's not all that different from Kim Zosiak. She isn't. Well, Kim just giving me reason to agree with Kenya more. Is, <laughs> is that enough? For enough? Me to not you fucking, pissed off. Like, honestly, you could piss off. How dare you? The show has been fine without Kim four seasons. And she, you know, ain't nobody no, everybody mm-hmm. is tardy for her fucking party. Cause don't nobody watch that fucking show with her by herself. So you're trying to come and get a it's peach true. It's by true. lying and doing whatever the other dramatic stuff. And I'll happily watch it, but I'm also going to say you're a liar because I believe that she's a liar. You're just mad because she gave you a reason to be on Kenya's side. That's all this is. No, Kenya, she's also trash. Like she also was at Nini's fucking house with her daughter. Neither one of them were invited talking about the bitch had roaches and couldn't talk like. You you know, First of all, and that confused me when Kim was talking about it. I was like, so... There were like 24 roaches. We literally just watched the fucking video. It was one bug and it was not a roach. <laughs> How do we get from that to there was 24? Right, to an and army of to roaches. Say- and then the very next day, all up in Nene's face talking about, oh, well, you know, I love you and Brielle just like stands for you and all this. It's like... Keep that same energy when you talking about going in my house and taping roaches all over my bathroom and shit like that. It just seems real fake in that way. But that's this show like these. I can't think of a time when any of them wasn't fake for the sake of the cameras. Well, Candy said on Twitter, I'm sick of these bitches lying on me. Kim Zosiak, I have never wanted you or your box and stop swearing on your kids while you're telling lies. Lying ass bitch. Somebody's really reaching for a permanent peach here. This is my house you're just a visitor so that um Uh, kim said if anybody is lying it's you you and your husband are full-on swingers fucking all kinds of girls and can never admit it and bitch if it weren't for me there would be no house remember i built this house candy has never denied that she likes girls i was gonna say i feel like everybody knows that she is specific about who she is not interested in right and that they do things the legal consensual way they don't drug people and take them back to the sex dungeon like Phaedra and what's her face try to lie what's her name Tasha Tanya Ta- hey, Portia Portia right didn't wasn't Tasha doing all, <laughs> whoever you know what I meant she wasn't doing all that extra like they tried to say she was so you know she can swear on one of her two of her kids she got eight more Mm-mm. see but the one's face already got chewed up by the dog if I, I would think after something like that happened you wouldn't play around about your kids wait what remember when the dog ate up Cash is cash money. I don't know cash. What you're about. One of her kids, I think, is named Cash, and I think the dog 
attacked the baby and he had to go to the hospital and his eye was all crazy and i think they had to sew some shit back together he looked real crazy and then they got rid of the dog and all that but you would think after something like that happened you would stop talking you wouldn't be swearing on your child's life <laughs> like especially over something dumb like this because why would candy ever want your pussy of all the white girls Ugh, the thought of going down on Kim's is all sick. Oh, I just know it don't smell right. Like it's mothballs just... and apple cider vinegar. <laughs> I know it. Oh, I don't know why, but I just had a vision. Hey, you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. There was an episode of That's a Right There. Uh-uh. The original series. Right. Where there was like some cheese or something that she, like she was being a bad girl. She was with them bullies, Agent Valon and shit. And they had put some cheese up in the heating vent so that the whole school would melt and the whole school would smell like cheese. This sounds familiar. And Raven was trying to Did stop it. From the, and she crawled up in the vent. <laughs> yes. And it was crazy hot and the cheese was bubbling. And she yes. had to like eat it to get rid of it. <laughs> For whatever reason. The oh, no. Ew. Being down below. <laughs> <laughs> on Kim's OCS. It just my, bubbling hot warm cheese. What are you even going to see when you get down there? Bubbling <laughs> hot warm cheese. <laughs> Fuck I don't care. Uh, what, I'm not prescribing to no white hoes, uh, lying, no black women. I don't uh, care who the black women no, is. Right. I'm not voting for you, bitch. Soon as I heard that, I was like, no. I feel, and I feel like Candy probably has taken down a white girl or two in her day. Probably. But not Kim Zosiak. <laughs> She's going to pick somebody who ain't already had a million. You know what? Never mind. Let me not do that. Let me not do that. Um, Speaking of hoes, Offset has... Um, oh God, this nigga. His new apology apparently was a tattoo of Cardi B or Cardi B's name on mm-hmm. his neck. Um, this found its way to the gram and other social media places via video. Uh, first of all, I want you to know that right above the Cardi B tattoo on his neck is a tattoo of Buttercup from the Powerpuff Girls. Holding some form of a gun or... I, don't know. <laughs> I was about to say, really? This sounds not like what I would have expected, but of course, it's, it's Thug Mrs. Buttercup. <laughs> what the fuck? Why? Is it like a Glock or something? I don't know. Does she have a bandana tied around her face? What the fuck is wrong with you niggas? Anyway, so she's recording this video of him with this tattoo on his neck. This is, you know, while the barbs are still trying to get them to break up. <laughs> because he's too young. Like, so, all I, I see, love watching these young kids go at it. It's like, funny. They, anyway, so here come her long ass nails in the video, moving his dreads up the way so you can get a full look. And, and this made you happy? I don't know. Is you happy? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> they're just like ghetto. Crying. That's it. And like, leave them alone <laughs> and let them be ghetto. Like, they're just like every other hood couple out here. He cheated on her. And now he's got a tattoo with her name on it. This is how much I love you. Like, it's under a tattoo of Buttercup. <laughs> you want me to take this fucking shit seriously? But you are definitely my favorite bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you are number one on the just list of like people Buttercup I would fuck. Is. <laughs> She was my fave and you are too. Niggas it's will symbolic. Do everything except just be faithful. Every single thing except stop putting their dick in other people. Someone, of course, she's still, you know, doing interviews with random people on social On Instagram media comments, it. yeah. You know, she's having a full she's Q&A. Still... Um, oh. Someone on Twitter said something about her being the only faithful one in the relationship. And she responded by saying, how you figure that? Oh, okay. So implying that I guess she's fucking. I too. like that. I well, mean, listen, I'm all for that. I mean, in that case, I, I planned on letting y'all just be ghetto together and have your hood trials and tribulations and yeah. throw things. But I would love to hear that Cardi B is, is out here fucking around on that nigga. Yeah, that's great. Actually, <laughs> you should. You should be. I mean, if he's fucking, you know, and he you're is, fucking, and you know. He Sounds like y'all are in an open relationship. Right. And maybe that works for y'all. If that's what makes you happy, then do that thing. Either way, your business. Did you see what she was saying? People were asking her, like, why do you search your name? Why do you 
respond. Yeah, why does anybody do that? Right. And she was like, y'all just don't understand. Every celebrity does this. And I'm like, no, mm, that's not true. No, story. it isn't. That it isn't. isn't the case. <laughs> Every celebrity does not do that. No. I feel like most celebrities are like, you know what? There are plenty of people willing to at me with their shady comments and mm-hmm. other things, you know, with like there are plenty of people willing to at me. Right. I'm not going to go look up the niggas who don't want to at me. I feel like if you are not adding me, especially if you're saying something shady, then you're not talking to me or about me. Right. Like, you I are having care. a conversation, but I'm not a part of it. You're talking to your cable <laughs> service provider. <laughs> Shit, talking to me. And that's none of my business. I don't care about so that. So I'm not gonna go look up your comments about me that you didn't want to tag me. In. You didn't want to. <laughs> you didn't want me to see it. Clearly, it's just not that serious, and it's so, never gonna be right. But she was just saying how she like. I think the way she was saying it was like she just couldn't help it. Like she just had to. Like, She's a regular girl. She really is. She just is. She like I don't, really is. It's it's almost like sad to me to see her like, you know struggling to like get her footing of being a celebrity and not just being a girl from the Bronx anymore because mm-hmm. it's probably really hard for her. I'm sure she just wants to maintain a lot of that anonymity and just free you know posting new whatever girl. you want right. to type of shit talking back to whoever you want to on Twitter and fucking whoever and dating yeah. your nigga and post neo nigga and whatever the fuck it is that regular average everyday people do you can't do that no more right so it's difficult like, for her Maybe she never will. I don't know. But I just feel like she doesn't have like a mentor, an older woman, an older female rapper, <laughs> That's maybe. Not true. Maybe. I don't think she has an older female Kim rapper. Kim loves to be. her. I'm okay. sure she has like at least a couple. I'm talking of, about somebody like, who, if they text Cardi like, sis, you know, <laughs> meet me for drinks and let's talk about some stuff. Like somebody who I can name some people chill. that I've tried to do that with that don't respond. Oh, so, well, you know what? That doesn't You can't always, help everybody. You, hello. So maybe she just don't want to be saved. Maybe she Look just at Will and Jada going. and Tyrese. <laughs> They tried to have a private conversation with that man, and it turned into Will and Jada are wiring me $5 million. He did everything but FaceTime them and <laughs> IG Live at the same time. Or like, <sighs> Anyway, so... I still really like Cardi. I want her to win, but I, I don't think she's going to win if she's constantly caught up in what every single body has to say about her. Like, sis, you have the number three song on Billboard and two other songs in the top ten. Who gives a fuck? That I just, she's new to the game. Yeah. She might adjust. She might not. Either way, Good I think that luck. she's having a really El great Calice. time yeah. at the moment. And I don't really have anything That's bad to say That's what matters. About her. Yeah. She's super cute and very real. <laughs> <laughs> Being all proud of your nigga getting, his name, getting your name tattooed on his neck, even though we all know he's smashing other hoes, is very real. And again, they're so hood. Like, of all of the places to tattoo. <laughs> the neck anything did he even have any blank space anywhere else though maybe that was all that was left that's true he probably didn't have nothing he was like look i got two inches by two inches on the neck and then i got a small piece of real estate right above the left kneecap and other than that there is nothing so you choose (laughs) well hood love god bless Mm -hmm. all those involved speaking of well this isn't really hood love this is um Hood assumptions. You know, last week you you had brought up that rando porn star chick that was Mm. allegedly pregnant by Drake. You know how my third eye get to tingling sometimes. So the very next day. (laughs) (laughs) It was the very next fucking day. So I don't know exactly how how uh, recently a lot of this happened, but I think this lady had this baby last year. Whoa. Oh, that would make sense. Because these f- pictures from her uh, baby shower are from late last year, like August or something. And I read, I think she had the baby in October. Oh, okay. The baby is a boy. And the photo of the cake says Adonis. His name is Adonis. <laughs> I'm just guessing. <laughs> okay. All right, that is that is a that is a perfectly nice name. It is a, a dignified, name. yes, strength. Nice, nice name for you. It your, is a commanding name. It is for your for your baby, <laughs> your 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 quarter black baby. So so 
Um, I don't know if this happened last year or if this happened right after la- the last show or when. But at some point, <clears throat> Drake started following her on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So this is leading people to assume that she went ahead and had his baby and is keeping it on the low to get that check mm-hmm. or whatever. Smart, smart. Nothing is confirmed. Um, you I know, mean, there's a good chance that Drake is honestly just like, I needed to, you know, send you a DM to figure out where I can send the baby <laughs> some stuff because, you know, he just cares. <laughs> you know what? First, that is always it is likely that he sent that baby in OVO tracksuit. The man took a bunch of strippers up to the room to listen to smooth jazz. So it's possible. I'm just it's saying. It's possible that he was just like. We got a bunch of sneakers and baby clothes over here. I got a gift card to Babies R Us you could have. It's a whole truckload of diapers. He might just be feeling generous, but an owl pendant. I think my third eye tingled to let me know that <laughs> the news was coming that Drake does have a baby. I think that is his child. You think so? I do. Why? Cause the timing is is right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I, I got that. I don't know what the fuck this baby was conceived. I don't know, but you know, I just I I feel though, and I feel like this is Drake's child. You know what? The only reason that I feel like a lot of people are probably leaning in that direction is because she has not said anything about it. Like she hasn't yeah. accused him of being the baby. Bitches who lie will do it publicly. A lot. She probably knew from the beginning, this is your child, and we can do that DNA in the womb bullshit if you want to. But I'm pregnant with your baby, and so if you want me to shut the fuck up, we got to get some shit in line right now. That's... It's not like she's on Instagram with all these baby pictures of, like, her kid and Drake when he was two, side by side, you know, like on some Maury shit. She's being real classy and quiet about it, even after the news hit You know, all the big news sites like Shade Room Mm -hmm. and Baller Alert. Everybody knows. And she still ain't said yay or nay about it. So, Because, I mean, if that was not Drake's baby, and assuming you know whose baby it is, wouldn't you at least (laughs) want for somebody? Like, I would maybe probably be like, oh, well, you know, unless the child's father is like, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I mean, maybe. Or maybe she just likes the attention and and people speculating about whether it is or isn't. It really could. It could be anything. But the fact that he followed her and honestly, the fact that it was put upon my spirit to remember that young lady, I think it was a son. See, I'm just saying I be getting feelings about shit and I be right. What is this going to do for the morale for, you know, all star weekends? (laughs) Uh, one baby don't stop no show. Drake having a child is not gonna it's not gonna slow nothing down over here. <laughs> what? Well, he's a he's a father to that baby. He is not a husband to nobody. So I don't see where you having a kid is gonna get in the way at all. He probably had to change his number like three times. <sighs> he probably I mean, had to like step out the studio and immediately contact the phone, whatever AT and T's Verizon, whoever he got. Right. I just can't believe he's been seen with some of the baddest women. <laughs> That, like, I've ever laid eyes upon in my life, but that is his baby mama. <laughs> no shade to her, because, I mean, you the one that came up with the bag, and I did not. But facially, she's just nowhere near the level of some of the other girls he's been associated with. I didn't want to be the one to say it. I mean, just, it just is facts. I don't even care that she's white. She's just homely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she just, just is. is. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, but okay. Yeah. yeah well, men, only time men, will tell. Men date their moms. So... Right? I think that's what I've heard. That's the Yeah. Y'all forgot Drake had a white mama. Right. Really? I thought you were so about to rub your it. nipples. <laughs> I was like, what are you going through? I was leaning back. It's hot in here, first of all. I'm leaning back because you don't I just got can't. layers on. <laughs> Talking about well, it's, it's hot. cold outside and I don't feel like taking this sweater off. Oh, okay. <laughs> This is, I mean, we have central air. It's hot. If I'm, who's gonna cut the air on when it's thirty degrees outside? <laughs> Nigga, take that I mean, sweatshirt off. The heat's off. The heat has to be. The heat is on. All right. It's seventy-five degrees in here. We're taking a break. <laughs> Hey guys, this week's episode is being brought to you by ShipStation. ShipStation.com is the fast and easy way to manage and ship your orders all from one place. Whether you're using things like Shopify, Squarespace, Etsy, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, or over 75 other 
popular selling channels. ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface, which makes them easy to manage from any device, even from your cell phone. And the easier it is to manage, the quicker you can get your orders out and keep those customers happy. Use ShipStation to create shipping labels for all of the top carriers, including UPS, FedEx, USPS, and more. With ShipStation, you'll ship more in less time with the best rates available. No wonder ShipStation is the number one choice of all online sellers. We, you know, use ShipStation. Yeah, for our merch site. For our merch when we, you know, have things to send out to y'all, great people who order merch from us and things like that. So basically, if you are selling things and you need help shipping them out, this is the place to do it. It's just really fast and super easy. Right now, you can try ShipStation free for 30 days and get an additional month free only if you use our promo code READ. So don't wait. Go to ShipStation.com and before you do anything else, click on the mic at the top of the homepage and type in READ. That's S-H-I-P Station.com. Hit the mic and enter promo code READ. With ShipStation, you can make ship happen. (laughs) You see what I did there? Right. Let's get back to the show. Okay, so we're back, and it is now time for our listener letters. Yes, send your questions to asktherita at gmail.com. Like I said, the young lady uh, sent us a, an update with the pet problem, but Kid Fury clearly <laughs> feels like zero amphibians is you a reasonable way. You need a special way. place not in the house to visit it. <sighs> to- if he don't even want you to have like a little terrarium or something out on the porch out back or something like that yeah he's like he doesn't want any reptiles he's like just get a dog just, I would be uncomfortable honestly with it in the house period yeah girl. but I can understand you not wanting a dog and wanting that kind of I mean of cause thing. dogs will be all up on your ass even when you are not in the mood so right. that is true too <laughs> that is true too like a baby that is true too <laughs> Whereas I feel like an iguana, when you want to be left alone, that nigga will leave you alone. He probably wants to be left alone too. But you know, good good luck to you because we have conflicting opinions on that. I feel I like if you just get it, just get it anyway. What is he gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I actually that's actually like, I mean, like is he gonna break up with you because you got right? The that nigga will be all right. So. This question, oh God, it sounded straight out of Six Brown Chicks when I read it. I'm not entirely sure that it's real, right? So, but you niggas seem to love stuff like that. So, first one comes from Sheriff. Right. And Sheriff says, I have a dilemma I hope you can help me with. Bet you do. I'm a straight man who has experienced some traumatizing events recently. Here is what happened <laughs> I met this girl at the club, and I was fortunate enough to bring her back to the crib. Everything was fly. <laughs> Already trash. She was beautiful with dark cocoa skin, a fat ass, natural hair, and lips that taste like passion fruit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was already done from fortunate enough to bring her back to the group. <laughs> this is a nigga. Okay, go ahead. We were hot, heavy, and ready to smash when she pulled down her panties. To my discomfort, she had one of the longest clitoris I've ever seen. I was surprised and confused. However, I did not want to hurt her feelings, so I played along with her confidence. I played it cool and went down on her. It was weird, but I got over it. The real problem came when she put her hand on my head and forced me to put the whole clit in my mouth and suck it. She was aggressive and in the mood, so I again played along. Most men would find this emasculating, but guess what? I liked it. All right. We finished hooking up, and that was the last I seen of her. I bet. Side note, I cannot believe most men find that emasculating. What? <laughs> if a woman pushes your head yeah, I was into her, it's, you're doing something right. Men find everything emasculating. Oh, God. <laughs> can't nobody that's, that's, that's emasculate that's you. Your manhood is your manhood. We can't take that away from you. Especially if you liked it. God, what? Niggas, you were eating pussy. How do you feel emasculated? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the letter. Because it gets much crazier. I'm sure. Since then, I've been searching for a girl like her, but I've had no luck. Oh, now he wants some more long clit love. Therefore, in my mind, the next logical thing to do would be to go after penis. Wait. The night with that girl left me confused about my sexuality. Okay. If I liked sucking long clit so much, then I might be gay, right? Mm. Sure. What? (laughs) Sure, you might. (laughs) I went and found a guy and brought him home to tickle my curiosity. Okay. All I right. told you. I went down on him okay. 
I went down on him, and to my surprise, I did not like it. <laughs> we had sex, and I felt uneasy the whole time. Oh, you kept going. I guess I'm just nice, and I can't say no. But we were already in the act, and I didn't want to be rude. You're allowed to Since say no. you are at any point allowed Male, to say no. Male, female. Since then, I have sustained from sex for a while to ponder on my emotions. <laughs> what do you guys think? I like long clits, but penis was not my thing. Am I gay? Thanks, Sheriff. <laughs> This is what the fuck y'all be asking for. <laughs> See, although, you know, a, a, like the majority of my spirit believes that this is a lie. But <laughs> right. It was, it was a mess. <laughs> Just imagining that it could be, because it could be true. So, like, it could be. That is that's so, why I you know said something? six brown chicks. I thought I kind of thought that that story about homegirl who had a threesome with her man and her best friend was fake. I thought that that was fake. We met them niggas. Oh God, what? They came to my party. You don't remember we met them? Your party? My three hundred five live party oh, last year. Oh, I think you I may have been drunk. This. Yeah, I think I blocked that out. <laughs> So. Oh shit! Oh wait, no. Ah, uh, this is coming they back. They came up to us. Yes, and we're like, we're the ones. I mean, unless they liars too, but I don't believe. I mean, I, think that, I mean, maybe. <laughs> but so, what do we have for sheriff, <laughs> sweetie? <laughs> um, <clears throat> does liking no long clips, sheriff? But I'm drawing a blank here. <laughs> I just, I You really thought <laughs> So <laughs> Sir, so you I'm just trying to figure out how you arrived to the assumption that You must be gay. Dick was for you because you liked long clips. <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense. Oh <laughs> It doesn't it's it might be a long clip, but it's still It's still a clitoris. <laughs> Still resting amidst the rest of the vagina, the rest of the vagina. So I just don't understand how having a long clit in your mouth made you think, huh, that was delicious. Maybe dick next. You know what? <laughs> Yum I can't eat. find any more, you know, normal clits. So. And I've had an ex with, well, I guess it's different with lesbians. I was about to say that was not a problem in our relationship. I'm sure it wasn't. How ridiculous. You could see it from across the room. <laughs> It. I was just like, yo, so you just have a dick. Like, you're just gonna have a dick, and that's fine. You just are gonna. So, okay. You know, all I will say to you, <sighs> Sheriff, I love it, is that if this is in fact a thing that happened to you, yeah, I will commend you for your uh, your willingness to experiment with your sexuality mm -hmm. and not only that I like but, where you went with this but to ponder on it afterwards and figure out what this means to you our laughter should not allow you or anyone else to think <laughs> <Right>. that <laughs> there is something wrong with this you know it is healthy and it is actually very progressive and um I mean, you were, you were curious and you wanted to know. Exactly. I just feel like the curiosity for man sex, I have a hard time believing that it was simply just because, I, I mean, I don't, I ha, it's still a vagina. I, I don't, right. Long clitoris or not. I mean. It's above a cooch. Whereas the dick is above balls. I just feel like if you've slept with more than like five women, you have to be aware that like vaginas and all that they come in a lot of there's lots of different lots ways of they can look yeah so the the fact that an an extra long clit threw you off so much that you were like maybe i just need to deep throw some dick <laughs> it's just, the leap there is a lot but i appreciate that you were like i'm curious about it so i'm gonna try it out but it wasn't for me i didn't really like having dick in my mouth i fucked this nigga but my heart wasn't into it so <laughs> so i think you can rest assured because his overall question was if is he, he gay? was gay the fact that you did not enjoy sex sucking dick or having sex with a man leads me to believe that you are not. Me I too. don't think you're gay. I think you just like women being sexually aggressive. And for the record, 
Most will never admit it, but a lot of straight men have experimented with men in one capacity or the next. Maybe not full blown sex, mm-hmm. maybe not oral, but lots of men right. have and will take that shit to their grave, and that's their motherfucking business. Again, you allegedly were, you know, <laughs> right? Because we don't know comfortable to an extent, at least, to say. Hmm. Thinking about dicks? Let's see what this is about. Uh, not for me. Maybe that didn't that's make cool. any sense <laughs> as a thought process. Because I, I just <laughs> don't get it. Like, I, like, I'm not judging nobody. I just don't understand oh, how, like, apple it. plus apple equaled orange. <laughs> right. I just don't. It but didn't make sense, but that's all right. Either way, you landed where you did, mm-hmm. and you did some thinking for yourself, and I think that that is great. Women are permitted to do that all of the time. A woman can be dating niggas for decades and meet the right stud and be all of a sudden get in her life and be like it's for me or it's not for me or right, whatever and then right. ruin this damn stud's life but <laughs> it happens literally all the time and everybody's okay with it so you did the same thing it's not your tea maybe you need to i don't know get girls with straps or maybe there's a long clip forum this should be an option on dating profiles clit length so your clit length we're talking external view how much of it is visible (laughs) because he's like if I can't see at least an inch of your clitoris it's a (laughs) no-go Just like that feeling, just <sighs> resting on your bottom lip, don't you? That's all right. You can just, like it. You can like it. I think what turned you on so much about that encounter was that she had something that you thought she should have been ashamed of. Like at first you were like, Jesus, what a long clip. But then y'all started fucking and you were really into it. Right. And she, you, like you said, you played along with her confidence. I don't think she was playing with her confidence. I think she was very well aware that she had some good pussy and she was about to turn you out. <laughs> Hey, hey, you ain't seen her. And you have been day. searching for her since. She's just going around <laughs> casting her long clit spells, <laughs> turning them gay. <laughs> Let me not say that before y'all fuck around and think turning gay is a real thing. Now I'm picturing like somebody using that clit as like a wand, like Hogwarts. <laughs> when when God God <laughs> Love you. Lumis <laughs> Woo! Okay. Yeah, you're not gay, Let's, baby. You're, you are, you're not gay. I would vote no, and I'm pretty gay. But <laughs> All kudos right. to you. Huh. Father, K. Yeah, that was good for me. Man. See, it didn't have to be true. Like, that was right. fun. It probably wasn't. We'll, it'll probably be on Six Brown Chicks probably. next week. And we'll be like, okay. I so. saw people retweeting one that was similar to the... Oh, yeah, the the African parent one. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, she emailed us back, too, and said that she gave her boyfriend an ultimatum. He was like, no, they're not ready for it. And so she was like, fine, I'm not talking to you no more then. And he called her back like, wait, for real? (laughs) Like, what did you think, Like, you really going to leave me? And so then he called and told his parents about her. And they were like, well, you just need to make sure you focus on school. And there's still plenty of Congolese women out there. But they weren't like break up with her she's the trash because she's black american oh well that's good yeah and he said if, if if his parents will allow white people in the family then he's definitely not gonna let them disrespect her so oh now apparently yeah apparently they're gonna work it out he just had to be fa- he had to face the fact that she was right. really about to leave his ass once you put both and then all because he was like oh no i can't tell him now give me another six months this is this and she was like nah nigga it's like it was just african families like a lot of people are just very tied down to the traditions and ideals of their parents like through all of their adult Mm -hmm. So it's not really surprising to me that he was, you know, concerned or scared or whatever about how they would react to his girl. But you definitely have every right to be like, okay, nigga, no, you and your parents figure it out. I mean, and if it would be one thing if they were like, he just want, they just want him to date a Congolese girl. I would be like, I wouldn't even like, I mean, that sucks for you, but I understand people not wanting the their cultures and customs right. and things like that to necessarily be lost to another generation. Right. But the fact that they were cool with white Americans and not us was <laughs> for me, the whole problem. That, been a <laughs> that was the whole, like, so them, them demons are good enough for your kids, but we ain't right. Well, we are literally just your brothers and sisters grew up on a different, on a different continent. That's literally uh, it. Uh, so, huh? Yeah. Anyway, let's get to the next question. This one comes from Eva and she says, One night about a month ago, my boyfriend and I were out eating at our local Olive Garden. My back was to the entrance and my boyfriend 
was facing it. Towards the end of our meal, he randomly says, what the hell? And when I turned around, there stood my aunt's husband with a woman who was clearly not my aunt. Oh, God. They were there on a date, holding hands and making googly eyes at each other. Of course he's cheating on this bitch at Olive Garden. At the, at the fucking Olive of Garden. Of course he is. You would take a bitch somewhere with unlimited soup, salad, and breadsticks. Because that's impressive. <laughs> She was like, oh, it's like a oh, he all the plastics I want. Mm. They bring the cheese over and they just grate it <laughs> until you say stop, girl. It was so nice. I like the dark bread best. <laughs> the little brown bread, girl. I don't even know how they make <laughs> that it. Brown like bread. That brown bread. It is good. It is fire. I don't understand why my mama loves. Uh, it, to me, Olive Garden is probably the nastiest chain. When I was a child, I really liked it. But, but then I grew up. <laughs> right. My mama wanted to go for Mother's Day like five years ago, and I literally just sat there and drank wine the whole time. It's a girl, grease. I can't eat this. Like, it's just <laughs> so <grease>. nasty. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the letter. Eva says, So, hubby's cheating. Right. Her aunt's husband is cheating. And so she says, When we were leaving, we had to walk past them. Of course. And when he saw me, you could have bought his ass with a penny. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I like it. <laughs> I do not get that, but I, I really like so it. <laughs> I spoke briefly, but kept walking. And this man ran full speed out the restaurant behind me trying to plead his case. I told him, save it. And that my aunt would know within the second. Woo! He then explained that he wanted to tell her himself and asked me to give him a chance to let her know no he offered to pay me 150 dollars every week until he could figure things out oh hell no nah. me being a nigga i said okay <laughs> i've been receiving the money every friday <laughs> <me and Kat. laughs> that took a turn <laughs> <laughs> I've been receiving the money every Friday via cash app, but here we are a whole month later and my poor aunt is still clueless. I assume this is because I keep waking up every Friday $150 rich. Yeah. My question is, do I tell my mother what I saw and let her handle it as her sister? Or since I'm the one who saw it with my own eyes, should I be the one to let it be known at this point? I'm telling. Thanks for listening. Eva. Eva. Girl, you're trite. You ain't. <laughs> you sold out your 80 for $600. First of all, from the moment that that nigga said, I just, I can give you however much money every week until I figure things out. You should have known he had no, no intention, intention of telling her anything. Right. It should have been, I'm about to tell her right now. Right. Or even tonight, I still would have felt like he was lying. But I would have checked back in in the morning. So she know everything or do I need to call her now? Right. So what's up? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I might have given you the night to you, tell my Annie what she was doing. You just decided free money every Friday <laughs> was way more lengthy, your auntie. So, I mean, and I get it because $150 will get you through the weekend. It will. That's dinner. That's the club. Right. That's another dinner. That's another club. <laughs> you ain't shit. Now you're going to look horrible, too, because when she right. finds out and find out that he's been paying you off right. your for Annie's a month, going to be pissed. she's going to be mad at you, too. <laughs> Girl, and it ain't... That Nothing you can do about that. I mean, I guess you could probably tell her what you saw without mentioning the money part. Because it's not out. likely that your uncle, well, it's not likely that your aunt's husband is going to be like, yeah, aunt's paying your niece and she ain't saying nothing. That's probably not going to happen. But your auntie is going to be like, so you saw this a Niggas month ago and enough. didn't say nothing right. It just. Yeah, either way. It's not going to look right on you. So if I were you, I would go. You've already made up your mind to say something, which is I'm proud of you for deciding to do the right thing. A month later. Finally. But, you know, you got there. <laughs> it's not like you took his money for a year, I guess. That girl probably had so much brown bread. <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck are you like this? <laughs> she is in back to all of the brown bread is free. <laughs> exactly. He's like, you coming out of an extra 150 every weekend, you do need free bread. I'll have a water face. I don't even remember what the fuck I was saying. You uh, need to tell her, and you <laughs> did this once for me, actually. You need to tell her. Same thing I always do. Oh, I did do this once you. For can you. go and tell them right now. Yep. All right. Or I'll do it. Oh, now I'm thinking back on that moment. And really, should I should have been like, you either tell him now or you give me $150 a week. <laughs> Until you figure it out. And I will tell my friend that you fucking around on him later. And you probably would have got it. <laughs> I probably would have. So like, 
<laughs> then nigga was like, I would really rather pay her $150 that is crazy. a week than tell my wife that I'm a dog. Huh. <sighs> I mean, he took her to the Olive Garden where any damn body could see. So he clearly wasn't trying to, like, not get caught. This is not the shit that niggas do. Probably the local one. When they, Right, she said it was our local Olive Garden. <laughs> so, she did say she, that. <laughs> it was the Olive Garden. She made sure to put that in there too, just to show you. Not a in, uh, Olive Garden. This is the one Olive Garden where we live. So why niggas. would he t- niggas? Not many niggas cheat with finesse. Usually they're uh, down about it. Uh, does Olive Garden have a two for twenty or something? Because that explains why a nigga took her there. Probably <laughs> it's Olive Garden. So, so yeah, girl, you just have to be honest with your Annie at this point. And say, you know, times are hard. I I did let him pay me off for a little while, but he ain't tell you. And so I just had to let you know, Annie, that your husband is stepping out. Yeah, if you're going to come with the honesty, you're going to have to come 100%. Just just say it, girl. Times is hard, and I couldn't be turning down that kind of money. But I'm caught up on my cell phone bill and the cable bill now. So I felt like I could come to you like an adult and tell you what I saw. You ain't getting a Christmas (laughs) gift for a little while. No, you're not. (laughs) Don't call your Annie for $20 for nothing. (laughs) Because she going to say, take it out the money my husband gave you. (laughs) That's what I would say. Woo. Okay. So our last question. I don't know if we should read one from another straight man. The, The last one was so much. Why not? Can't get much worse than long clit and extortion. Okay. Well, that that is is not extortion. Is it? No, it is. Sort it's of? not really extortion because he off. It's bribery. Bribery. <laughs> he was like, "I'll pay you if you don't say something." There's the word. But anyway, you got to you have to be honest with your auntie. So our last question comes from Alec, who says, "I've been dating the same girl off and on for two years. She's the ideal girlfriend for more reasons than one, but I've been reluctant for our situation ship to turn into a committed relationship. Things are going well for us, and I could see a relationship happening soon. But there are two things that have held me back." Up until this point, part of the reason is because my last relationship ended badly and it took time for me to heal from that heartbreak. Mm. The other reason is that the young lady and I have been dating and we will both the young lady that I've been dating and myself will both soon be knocking on 30s door. But she dresses like she will be knocking on a freshman dorm door. I think she's a great girl, but she could use some assistance with elevating her look and looking more age appropriate. Whenever we step out and she looks really nice, like an adult, I make it. <laughs> I make it a point to compliment her throughout the night. I know it's very superficial, but I'm honestly attracted to a woman who is well put together and fashionable. How can I relay this information to her without seeming like a judgmental asshole and hurting her feelings? And should I do it before or after getting in a relationship with her? Love you guys. Love the show. Thanks for any advice, Alec. Well, Alec, what is she wearing? Light up sketchers? You know, she's probably dressing like me. She's probably wearing <laughs> t-shirts and sweatpants and tennis shoes or Uggs that's every not, single day. <laughs> that's not what it is. He sounds age appropriate. That doesn't sound like it has anything to do with age. It no, like- I think I think what he's saying is he likes girls because this is something I've dealt with with an ex who's like, why do you always look? so regular like you never want to put on an outfit you never want to put on like heels and dress and do something okay. with yourself and i'm like no i don't ever so want to do that that's what he means i think that's what he means i don't think he means she's she's wearing like rainbow bright it makes more sense yeah because i'm like if you almost 30 and you're talking about she dresses like a a college freshman or right. something like is that like a huge difference no like, i think no no i think he means she looks a forever 21 mess like she's just wearing leggings okay and t-shirts okay Okay. And Uggs I constantly. Can, yeah. Okay. Let's and he likes that. it better when she puts on real clothes, which, I mean, fashion sure. Fashion Nova jeans. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> Put on your Fashion Nova with your Tom Ford and right. let's go to dinner. And that's yes. also fine. He just prefers her looking like that and not so much in the, the day-to-day style. I feel like we got a similar email to this one. Maybe it was about lingerie. Huh. Where somebody like a guy said like his, he he didn't he wanted her to wear it but she didn't want to something yeah like that. something like that either way I feel like if you want her to whatever you want her to be wearing buy it first of all that's a very good point <laughs> whatever it is you like her to be looking good in and stuff like that go out there go get her some, whatever kind of jeans it is whatever dress it is you like her looking in or looking good in or whatever mm-hmm. go out buy her one take her on a date tell her to put that shit on kind of you know. 
ease your way into softly saying I like you in this compliment her like crazy when she does look good Mm. like just you know subtly yeah you know implying or whatever like hey you're way more lit like this this is you in it drives me you know what I'm saying like damn you are so fine in that wow wow I can't stop staring at your ass just wow, compliment I love her it. and 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 you know encourage you because you don't want to just be like oh bitch you look sloppy <laughs> why are you always so time. fucking regular <laughs> well as a woman who is always so fucking regular I think I would just say let her decide if you are worth the effort of dressing up or dressing in the way that you want her to. Like, maybe she just truly does not want to put on real clothes every day or dress in the way that you find attractive on a regular basis. Or maybe, you know, she really likes you and realizing that this small thing is like turning you off would be enough of an incentive for her to to turn it on. You know, maybe that's the case. Or maybe she's like, oh, you don't like the way I dress? Who cares? You can kick rocks. <laughs> right. <I was laughs> she might say. feel that way also. <laughs> So after like hinting at it, I would probably just say it to her in the kindest way possible. Like, I think you look better like this or I'm way more attracted to you like this, blah, 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 blah. See what the response is. And then you can gauge whether or not because you ain't even in a relationship with a girl. You say it. Right. It sounds to me that Break you're up with her? you're looking for, right. They're not even in a relationship. It sounds like you're looking for a reason to not be in a relationship. I think the yeah. la- the the previous relationship that you talked about and the fact that it ended badly and it took time for you to get over yeah. the heartbreak. It sounds like you're really not ready to be committed to somebody else and so you're looking for whatever stupid reason to not because (laughs) unless she's wearing these clothes in a place where you just would not expect somebody to be dressed so stank and regular like if she's just at home all the time then it's just yeah that's another thing I was gonna say like like, what do you want me to do I'm not putting on a ball gown to go to the movies think about how often you're like dress dressed and where you are when you're doing (laughs) it and so on and so forth or whatever because I think I said in a video one time that I feel like women just because of how y'all are set up biologically should be the ones if anybody to just never have on a bra and always wear flats (laughs) right and just whatever (laughs) like you should just at least have one or two days of the week where you're just like I'm not putting makeup on I don't care how my hair looks today i'm just gonna be lazy it's honestly me every day i'm a person (laughs) right so like i never wear makeup my hair is always in a bun at the top of my head and i am forever in some beyonce merchandise and some sweatpants it also is like wait there's way more that goes into being prepared to be this you know attractive woman right. you know what i'm saying like you it's work <laughs> you don't just like shower and get dressed like we need to and most of y'all <laughs> niggas don't even shower to be honest with you so you know what i'm saying Not good or she, she change your draws or Same. many other things i'm not speaking about you specifically i'm going to assume that you do since you're talking about this but I'm just saying, again, keep those things in mind. If she's just chilling and y'all are kicking it and you Netflix and chill or y'all walking around, I don't know, the park or something, then I don't (laughs) see why she should be dressed like she's going to a movie premiere. That's what I'm saying. I don't think she really... I think if you try to issue an ultimatum, you might get your feelings hurt when she's like, okay, well, we don't have to talk no more. <laughs> yeah, no, that's definitely a possibility. Because I'm not, I'm not going to go put on H&M, well, not H&M, because they shit is, we're not doing H&M. We don't do that. We're not doing that. But, you know, I'm not going to put on my finest of Zara every day just because that's what you want to see. So I would say let her make that decision. But really, it sounds like you're not ready to be in a committed relationship and you might want to take the time that as a sign that you need to take some more time to be alone. That's what it sounds like to me. But of course, and it also sounds like you're in a perfect place to just not date her. <laughs> like it doesn't sound like you have way too much. Y'all are situation shipping. Yeah. It doesn't sound. I mean, it's not like you said she was stressing you about being in a relationship or something. So right. I would say just let it rock and wait until your your perpetual bad bitch comes along. Because this this young lady doesn't sound like she's it. But yeah, you'll be fine. Uh, send your questions. That was actually the least tumultuous of all of these. This right. Week. So How anticlimactic. Send your questions to ask the read at gmail dot com, and we'll be back. Hey guys, today's episode is brought to you by Third Love. When it comes to bra shopping, it's all about finding the right fit for you. And Third Love is the only lingerie brand that offers bras in sizes AA through G. And 
the mysterious half cup sizes. Third Love uses thousands of real women's measurements and super smoothing memory foam to create bras that fit better and feel great. They have over 60 sizes, including half cups. If you've never heard of half cups, that's because nobody else really carries them. Most old school bras only carry like 15 sizes or so. If you're ready to find something that fits great and is just amazing on your body, I've told y'all about that t-shirt bra and how comfortable it is. It's the only one I don't take off as soon as I get home. So to find the bra that you've been waiting for, all you have to do is answer a few simple questions from Third Love's Fit Finder quiz. It just takes 60 seconds and you can do it all from the comfort of home. So this year, make the move that will change the way you think about bras by going to thirdlove.com slash read. Find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash R-E-A-D to get 15% off the perfect bra for you. Let them know Crystal sent you. Do something great for your titties and let's finish the show. Okay, so we're back to the show. It's time for the read. It is. Do you have a read this week? Yes, I just have two really quick things to say. First of all, um, I noticed that a few of you had some... um, Issues maybe with the discussion that we had last week about Genuine and India on um, Big Brother. You remember Genuine? Oh, the kiss thing. When she tried to kiss him mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, oh, I just saw lots of people saying, you know, it seems like they were uh, some people weren't uh, satisfied with. With what we said? How we addressed it, I guess. What do we do? I just saw way too many uh, comments about how Genuine didn't do anything wrong and that he was assaulted. What? And that we we would have never said it that way if he had tried to do that to her. And What am I missing? I saw one person who got blocked on my Instagram said some shit about... um, That person sexually assaulted Genuine, and y'all should have blah blah. Okay, goodbye. Never come back. <laughs> so, like the fact that you couldn't even you had to say that person, and oh, you could not yes. even say she. Right. I already know where you stand, right. and we're not going to agree about right. anything. So what you can do is piss off and never come back. I'm so, confused where the sexual assault happened, though. I'm again. I watched what I watched, and. How I felt about what I watched, okay. I very clearly said on the well, show last Well, I didn't week. see any video, so I don't, I don't know. But the story I heard, I did not hear sexual assault in it. So. Another thing that I said on the show was that I am not going to villainize Genuine because I don't think that he did anything wrong. And I was not going to villainize her either because I don't think that she did anything wrong. I think that she handled it not so great, but I think that overall it was about making, trying to make a point, not trying to make out with Genuine. Mm -hmm. We also said on the show, if anybody, even motherfuckers that we genuinely probably would bone, just tried (laughs) to randomly kiss us after 24, 48 hours or however long of us knowing each other, we probably would have been like hey back up so again the thing that makes this ironic to me is that the entire point that i was trying to make in that whole thing was that people should listen to the things that are being said to them Mm -hmm. especially from marginalized groups Mm -hmm. process those things and see if they can apply that to the array of thinking and their actions the fact that so many of y'all leaped not only over that but over the very things that we said out of our mouths <laughs> and then came back to us talking about, well, genuine didn't do nothing wrong. Well, we Nobody said he did. We never said that he did. In fact, we said he didn't. So I don't. I mean, I straight up said, I'm not going to kiss you to prove your point. Even if I think you have a valid point, I'm not just going to kiss a random person or anybody that I don't want to kiss. So I don't understand how y'all took that and turned it into I think, else. genuinely, I think that y'all wanted for us to shit on this transgender woman just because she did something that you feel like she shouldn't have or because she was crossing boundaries, probably because she's trans. Because I feel like if it was just one of these cis 
women in the house to try mm. to do that, they would be like, oh, she got curved. And it would have been a laughter thing. It wouldn't have been, oh, she, uh, genuine was assaulted or whatever. Like, right. Anyway, the bigger picture to me is not even y'all I disagreeing. That's exactly what you're talking about. Because you're more than welcome to disagree with anything that I say on this show whenever you want to. It mm-hmm. is fine. I yeah. welcome it with open arms. But again, especially in a, in a topic where I was literally saying, Listen, the show was called, what was the show called? The episode. Uh, I don't even remember what the fuck, but I know that I put it in the caption, shutting the fuck up is free. Like, <laughs> close your mouths, Lord, open up listen, your ears, right. listen to the things that are being said. There are people of all kinds of walks of life that are telling their truths all of the time. Every single day, including us just as black people, all kinds of people, gay people, trans people, women, all of these people. And if you are not listening to what they are saying or even trying to absorb some of it, they're all saying the same shit. They're all telling like practically the exact same story. Don't know each other. You don't even give a fuck because you have already decided that they're whatever they're saying is not worth your time because you disagree with it. Fine. That's just not the show. This is not the show for you to come and try and kick that bullshit back to us, especially if we just said something completely opposite. So right. save your 140 or 280 characters, however many you got now, for somebody else. Well, we don't care for nobody doing wrong. Wrong is wrong. And so that, I feel like that has always been the case with the two of us, even if we really like somebody or if we really don't. Like, we're fair, I think, with the overwhelming majority of stories and situations. I try to be at least. So if this woman didn't assault Genuine and this was just a case of, you know, the whole setup was there and he wasn't, he was like, you know, I'm not going to kiss a stranger or a random or whatever. I'm just not going to kiss you. And that was the story. Then that's what, that's going to be what we talk about. We're not going to turn around and be like, how dare you as a trans woman try to ask somebody for affection or try to ask somebody to be a part of this. This is like, I'm not going to cuss her out for that because I still think whatever she was talking about was a valid point. Like there are a lot of you. And I think y'all's transphobia is showing in that whole thing who feel like it's something wrong with you. Like it's something wrong with you as a person. You confused about who you are. Are. You don't accept the way God made you or whatever the ignorant shit y'all are thinking about it. And so you projecting those negative feelings you have about her and, and transform them to us. Like we supposed to cuss her out on your behalf when we you don't do feel it, that way no. because we not transphobic. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're mad at that woman's very existence, it's nothing I can say on your behalf. You're not going to agree with the way that I handle the story because you and I are coming from two totally different places. Right. And that's a, I didn't see any of that, but I, I guess I just wasn't paying too close attention. So. I usually don't. But for whatever reason, I just it was on my Instagram. It's in my Twitter mentions and stuff like that. And usually I don't pay attention to any of those types of things. Because, again, like I said, you are allowed to not like something I said. Mm-hmm. You're allowed to disagree agree with something I said, I'm okay with both of those things. Yeah. I never have a problem with it and I rarely ever respond to any of it. It was just You're very still listening. funny. So thank you. To, I appreciate you. It was funny to me that like, it, like I don't understand how you could have been listening to that discussion and still came out of it with that response. Even if you disagreed with what India did, how you failed to listen, not only to like, the the perspective of someone who is trans and is discussing their their romantic life or whatever Mm -hmm. but you failed to even listen to what the fuck we were saying on the show (laughs) like why the fuck are you talking about we genuinely didn't do nothing wrong when we said that and it's not even just that I've noticed before that there have been things good and bad where people will be like well why didn't you say this or you don't think this and I'll be like but we said that which is why I usually don't respond to it but I think there's a bigger issue here of people just being willfully ignorant, but then at the same time loud. And I don't want to see us go out like that. We don't need to be white people. You know, what a great way to end it. We don't need to be white people. Secondly, if you do not like picking up shit, interacting with shit, having a dog is not for you. I want for you all 
to listen to me closely, especially New Yorkers. Y'all will grind your teeth to dust if we talk about this fucking city being dirty or stank or whatever. But I can't walk Link two, three blocks without having to step over endless piles <laughs> of shit. And of course, this little bitch always be wanting to get close and sniff. Or I, don't, I don't know always. if that's like how dogs text or what, but <laughs> like... Nobody wants to be walking down the street and have to see shit everywhere. First of all, I believe that it's a law that you have to pick it up. I think it is. But furthermore, do it just like have some fucking pride, bitch. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> so gross. Why do you have a dog for if you not going to pick up after them? Whether your dog shits in the house, outside the house, whatever. You are supposed to have baggies or something that you can. There are parts of like the city, even in Harlem, that have little areas uh, with like a little canister or something that they'll hang up on poles and trees mm -hmm. that have With bags, doggy bags in them. Yep. So you can do like pick up the shit off of the street. Nobody wants to step in dog shit and ruin their fucking day. Nobody wants to have to be walking their dog and try to fight their dog from sniffing <laughs> shit or just be walking by, down That's the street you. and see shit. Like it's no, just gross. It's just gross. And Lord knows that New Yorkers love a pitted bull. And them niggas give shit the size of this MacBook. <laughs> Pick it up. If you didn't want to do it, then you should have never got a fucking dog. They can't clean up after themselves. Nope. If you wanted a, an animal that does, you should have gotten a fucking feline. Because I don't subscribe to them shits, but at least, I mean, I don't have a cat. I feel like what you, do, you throw the, the, the litter away. They they have a, they go shit in like a bucket type thing, like a dust like a litter pan type thing. Right. And the one I had, you could shake it and then the top layer kind of lifted off and sifted the little balls of shit out and uh -huh. you could just throw them away like that. But the smell of the kitty litter... <laughs> When your cat has taken a shit and then they kick over it with extra litter like they ashamed right. of themselves. <laughs> like, so one funny. came in here and dropped a bomb you in the living what? room. This is so funny. When I was like a child, I had to have been, this had to have been before I was 10. I think I said that I wanted a cat to my dad. And my dad grew up like on a farm in Jamaica, so they had every animal. My dad <laughs> said to me, do you know what cat piss smells Ooh, like? Oh, amen. <laughs> amen. No, I don't have a cat. It's anyway. wretched. My father was like, no. No. <laughs> Not in my home. <laughs> no, that's right. But I'm it saying, can be found. Either way, like if you have a pet, you are signing up to take care of another living right. thing, which means that you are going to have to put things into it and you're going to have to take care of what comes out of it as well. I should not be the only one out this bitch picking up my dog's shit on the sidewalk and stuff like that. Like it's just a part of being a yeah, pet, pet owner. owner yeah. And honestly, it's not that deep. Like. You're not picking up human shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, praise God. <laughs> and honestly, you know, depending on who it is, I'd probably do that shit too and get over it. I mean, a loved one who could not do it for themselves. Right. Obviously, somebody say. incapacitated who was incapable otherwise. But a dog like my nigga, it is a ridiculous. It's ridiculous the amount of dog shit I see just walking to and fro around this fucking city mm -hmm. in all areas, but especially up here. Please. Please, whatever you do, find a way. Pooper scoopers. I'm sure that Amazon, Target, Ross. It has to be something. Somebody has to have something yeah. if you're just so poop phobic that you, that can make that process easier for you. But there should be no excuse for your dog taking a steaming hot shit <laughs> on the sidewalk and you just leaving it there. Right. Ugh. Especially, you could just put your hand in the bag, scoop it up, and then Thank you. fold you the bag to... over itself. It's not like you have to touch shit. Right. No one's <laughs> asking you to pick it up with your hands and smear it around your face. You it's can like... get a box of rubber gloves for like $2 from the dollar store and be good for a long, like the rest of the year. So I don't get... There's a trash can on every corner. You don't even have to carry it back home. Right. Like, what the fuck is your problem? Y'all nasty. <laughs> pick up your dog's shit. Uh, amen. I don't blame the dog. The dog is doing what it is supposed to do. It is your nasty 
nasty motherfucking <laughs> heinous inconsiderate asses that expect for the rest of us to just be walking over feces come on and hell heinous. some of it could be yours we still in New York uh, I don't know well you could just be taking shits together also true maybe it's a joint shitting project going on and I'm done that's it well speaking of shitty people doing terrible things normally I don't cuss out y'all's president for every single ignorant thing that comes out of his time. mouth but last Thursday I said wow this bitch really thought he was gonna say something on a Thursday and I wasn't gonna remember to cuss him out <laughs> next week but bitch you this thought wrong <laughs> you thought wrong this time so I'm certain everybody has heard this story already but Last Thursday in the Oval Office, President Trump, I can't believe that is, I'd like my stomach just sank saying that phrase, but um, he was talking with some other lawmakers and they were talking about, you know, this immigration deal and talking about protections for immigrants from El Salvador and African countries mm-hmm. and Haiti. And because this person has no soul, no history in politics, no intention of doing the right thing, no intention of doing the civil thing Mm. and incapable of being racist or not being racist. He said, why are we having all these people from shithole countries come here? We should be, you know, more worried about bringing people from Norway. (laughs) (laughs) And singled out Haitians said specifically, (laughs) why do we need more Haitians? Yes. Take them niggas out like okay other african countries maybe every now and then but still for the most part shitholes el salvador i ain't even got other words for y'all shithole haiti such a shithole that we might want to just turn around and take all the haitians who are here and send them back to their shithole like this is the way this man refers to people who come from different parts of the world to America seeking this bullshit American dream and a better life and all that other shit. The shit that America has always claimed to be about. It's a scam. An immigrant's country. Remember all that bullshit and come over here and bring us your tired and your poor and your (laughs) yearning to be free and all them niggas. But the, the craziest part about this story is that Trump seems to not understand that the only reason that these countries have a reputation of being dirt poor and high crime and few resources is because white people, American Uh, white people feel like you're coming with truth have robbed these places of all of their things, their people, their natural resources. You take literally, you mine these countries, you literally mine them for all of their resources, everything they have, and then turn around and shit on them for being poor and call where they come from a shithole. Like you're not the one who came over and shit in a home. <laughs> it's literally you and your people. Like it's you. You're the reason that what, that what you think they come from, like their whole that that their family and their whole history all of that you're the reason that you call it a shithole and yet you mad at them for coming over to america which is supposed to be for immigrants and it's supposed to be open to bringing people like it's that's the whole thing with y'all White people have been telling us for years Forever. that America is the big immigration melting pot. I guess to make yourselves feel you better be about the fact that it wasn't yours. Be. Right. I guess because y'all call what y'all did immigrating over here when right. really all you did was just slaughter the people who lived right. here. And so then you set up this whole, oh, well, it's okay that we killed all the natives because this is a country of immigrants. And so you posited this whole immigration thing only for it to really be about the blonde hair, blue eyed, perfect Nordish people from Norway that you wish would come instead and shout out to Stephen King for saying why would anybody from Norway want to come to America when they have working health care <laughs> and like a ruler who isn't crazy like people from Norway not pressed over coming to America anyway but this is just another example of Donald Trump being as shitty as he can to people who <sighs> it's <sighs> I just it's it's simply because we're black. It's bl- it's because we're black, we're brown, we're not American and even if we are American, that was another thing. Like I know a lot of you were taught that coming to America and working hard and all this you wouldn't 
necessarily be treated like black Americans or you wouldn't be like black Americans. Like you would be different from <laughs> us, maybe mm-hmm. better than us in some ways. And Donald Trump being in the Oval Office and saying, well, why are we taking all these people from shithole countries made you realize that them white supremacists in the White House look at y'all the same way they do the rest of us. Like maybe y'all are just now kind of coming to that realization like, oh, the fact that I was a superstar in my home country really don't mean nothing to this crazy racist white man. Like he just hates us all. He does. He just hates us all. And nobody who's been paying attention should be surprised by any of this. But I just wanted to make sure that I said an official fuck you to Donald Trump and his absolutely ignorant of everything. Including, and most importantly, history. Like, all things. Like, why is it that you think these random African nations are poor? What What do you think happened in Africa for that to be the case? First of all, your your idea, this media representation that you have in your head, this 20 cents a day, kids covered in flies, you know, infomercials and shit like that. What you think of these countries is not all that these countries are, first of all. Because I know a lot of ignorant ass white people online were like, well, they are shitholes. And, you know, he shouldn't have said that, but it don't change the fact that these places are shitholes. No, they are not. America has plenty of pockets of impoverished people also. There's a lot of places where you could go set up a camera and hit record and be shocked that what you're looking at is America. And Hello. it still is. So don't try to act like these places don't have anything beautiful or noteworthy or special about them because those beautiful noteworthy things were the first shits that y'all took so kiss my ass donald trump as always and this is a couple of weeks overdue but on young young (coughs) hip-hop on loving hip-hop miami i love this there's a uh there's a young dumbass by the name of young hollywood i mean you could start some kind of producer promoter i don't really know it doesn't matter but he was some kind getting into it with amara la negra who i heard about years and years ago and always thought she was like the finest woman i had ever laid eyes on i cannot get over how gorgeous she is but she is a proud afro latina i am so happy to see her talking about this on tv because i think for a lot of people it's finally clicking that you can be black and latino at the same time like every latina does not look like jennifer lopez or christina aguilera you know there are lots of them out there a whole lot who look like amara la negra and so The first time he got on my nerves was during this whole interaction with this girl. And of course, she walks in with her beautiful, dark skin and Afro just bussing, looking gorgeous and amazing. And he tells her, you know, you don't you don't really fit the look. You know, it's more of a Beyonce type thing. You need to be willing to kind of switch it up. More Beyonce, less Macy Gray. More Beyonce. She should have just punched him. Right. She should have just punched him right then. But the, the thing that I love so much about this girl, Amara, is that she never she never lets niggas say little dumb comments and then let it slide. She always drills down on them like, so what you're trying to say is I can't be elegant with an afro. Right. So what you're trying to say is I can't be gorgeous or sophisticated with my hair. Like, that. is that what you're saying? Like, she really makes niggas have to straight up say, yes, I'm being ignorant right now. Like, right. yes, I'm saying something stupid. And so he did that. And she walked. <laughs> out of the studio again being way better than me because once he called her queen nutella or whatever i would have knocked him the fuck out i mean we all love hip-hop let's get it popping we all love hip-hop i should beat your ass right Right. now so she didn't she was much better than me took the high road i just watched the other episode a few hours ago and so the storyline is that this white latina veronica vega who was trash she's trash She's trash. And I think next week we'll see why. Yeah. I know she has a song talking about niggas this and that. Baby, nigga, don't bullshit. Literally the worst song I can't. I think that I have ever heard. I'm not doing that. But anyway, she agreed to go on a fake date with him. The whole premise is that she was showing up so that he would apologize to her friend Amara. Right. And the entire apology was, (laughs) well, I mean, clearly it was a misunderstanding between the two of us. So immediately Amara's face is like, "Er," because it wasn't a misunderstanding. We were both very clear about what was said. This is just... I made you clarify. Men love to do this. Like, oh, well, it was just a misunderstanding between us. No, No, nigga, you you said something ignorant and wrong and I thought you were coming here to apologize, but instead you called me ignorant and talk about how I look like I'm a strong female and all this. <coughs> I'm trying to be cool with you, but you just being extra and da 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 da. The whole time he's really mad at her because she 
demands a genuine apology and he is not really sorry. That's right. why he has an attitude with her this whole right. time. He's like, you're being crazy and unreasonable and I'm trying to apologize and you can't Thank just you. let it go. And this is like, nigga, I'm not letting it go because we didn't have a misunderstanding. It's not like you said this and I heard something else. And so then we got into a fight. You said something stupid about me and I forced you to admit that that's what you said. And now that you come into me to apologize, I'm going to force you to say, I'm sorry for calling calling you Queen Nutella. I'm sorry for saying that you can't be professional or in the business looking the way you do with your Afro-Latina self. I'm sorry that I made you feel like your blackness made you less than somebody else. But you didn't say none of that because you didn't mean none of that. You said, oh, well, you know, it was a misunderstanding and blah, 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 blah. Just trying to keep this white girl happy next to you. And didn't mean none of it. And shout out to him. Again, I love this girl because she does not let niggas slide with nothing. She doesn't. She just would not take it. She said, fuck you and your whole clit and this, this, this. Bye, nigga. Da, da, da. He left. And so then she uh, was addressing Veronica like, <coughs> you know, I hope that's the end of whatever between the two of you. And the way that she reacted to that let me know that she was just 30 seconds away from turning on this girl and being like, well, I don't understand why you can't just accept the, the man tried to apologize. And I, based off the previews for next week, that's what I think is going to happen. She's going to be like, well, I don't understand why you couldn't just take his apology. And the whole, the man tried and you was just being unreasonable and crazy. The whole thing with him even attempting to apologize, like he said to her and Steph LaCour in another scene that he would apologize to her if the girl went on a date. With right. Him. He didn't give so a fuck. He didn't <laughs> give a fuck about anything that he said or processed how he said anything wrong right. or whatever. He just figured I'm going to go and fake apologize to this bitch. If you know, that way mm-hmm. I get to hang out with shorty. But Amara already knew that even if they didn't tell her, I'm sure she would have been able to see through it. So why would I not be offended and come at you when I know you're coming over here? Fake ass apologizing to me to get some pussy from my alleged friend. Fuck out of here. Just don't come say nothing to me. I didn't even ask anybody to come and get to, to get an apology from you. Right. I was pissed. I'm done with you. It is what it is. And of course that girl is going to go and do whatever like weak, low shit. Cause I already seen them fighting on the previous. Right. I saw it also. And so I'm just like, it's just a matter time and it doesn't surprise me either that white latinas don't really stick up for black latinas like you did the bare fucking minimum and not even really anything because if you were a real friend or you really cared about the shit that he said if you really felt like he was being anti-black and he was wrong for what he said then you should have been like uh fool i'm not going on a date with you to get you to fake apologize to my friend like if you're going to apologize then you need to mean it you need to understand what you did wrong but he didn't and apparently he's doubling down on his dumb assness she called herself Afro Latina, and he said, "Oh, is that because you're from Africa, or is that the is that is that because of the Afro bitch?" Literally ignorant. Like you, sh- shut up. It's because I'm black and I'm Latina. What do you not get it? The girl's given name is like Danellis De Los Santos or something. <laughs> like. It's she's very much Latina, and then you look at her, and she's very. She said it like, "It's because I'm cl- I'm I'm black." If you had not noticed. <laughs> You didn't see the hair. You didn't see the skin. You didn't see all like I'm clearly black. So the best part about this whole story is that young Hollywood has been getting death threats since he trashed her. Cool with me. (laughs) I love it personally. (laughs) But yeah, you know, on Instagram, niggas go off and they have been, you know, just not letting him have it. Talking about how he never he should never be able to work with anybody again. He's clearly so racist. And I think the part that blows his mind. I think he's shocked that people are considering him racist for this Uh because for so long, Latinos and really anybody who wanted to shit on black people who also have another identity have been able to do that by basically saying, well, you're not really one of us anyway. I think that idea of, I think people are just now starting to wake up to the the reality that Afro Latinas are a thing, especially in American culture. People might get that elsewhere, but here I think we still very much want to put people in boxes of you're Latino, so you look like this and you go over here, and you're black, so you're this and you go over here. And she is fucking with that whole thing, and he he's got these racist ideals so deep in, so deep inside him that he don't even see nothing wrong with telling a black girl that she needs to switch it up and, and let her hair be straight or put wigs on or do whatever the fuck else. And so, and it's really, really bad in Miami. 
Like I'm I wasn't sure even shocked, it is. and I'm, I'm glad sure that it's it a part is. of the storyline. I am glad are. also. I'm glad. I'm glad that this is part of the story line in the same way that I don't know. Did you read the Aziz Ansari thing? Oh no. <sighs> Be glad you didn't. It made me uncomfortable reading the girl's story. And even though there's, I know there's been lots of criticisms of people saying, oh, well, she should have left before this. And, you know, she had plenty of opportunities to get up and da da da. All that is, can be true. But still reading the story, I felt like the problem here is that probably most men can see themselves as Aziz Ansari. And they can see themselves continuing to pursue a woman sexually when she's already made it clear that she doesn't want to, even though she didn't do the things that you might expect somebody to do if they didn't really want to have sex. Like she took her clothes off and she sucked his dick and all this other stuff. But when she talks about the way that they interact with each other and the fact that she was like, you know, I don't want to feel forced into anything. And then he turns right around and sticks his fingers in her mouth and all this other stuff. Reading it, I felt like, We should probably I should probably be more upset by this. I should probably be like, wow, I can't believe a man would continue to pursue a woman who made it so plain that she wasn't trying to get down like that. But he just kept going and going and and like simulating sex acts with her and being sexual with her that she felt pressured into doing it. But that is such a common part of society. So many men do that. And so many women are used to being treated in that manner that I think people don't even look at it as the big deal that it really is. And so I'm glad that the story came out because it's important to talk about the gross niggas like, like Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein, the niggas who are doing the shit that everybody can agree is egregious and terrible. But it's also important to talk about the people on the lower end of the scale who are doing stuff that is just super prevalent in society. And we don't look at it as being as big of a problem because people aren't getting outright raped or sexually assaulted in the way that we're used to talking about or sexually assaulted in a criminal sense. But it's still something that needs to be talked about because we as a society have a allowed to shit to get to this point we have allowed it to get to the point where men relentlessly pursuing women who have made it clear that they're not interested is not only normal but expected behavior and right. that's the same way i feel about this story with young hollywood and amara la negra people feel so comfortable telling black women that they need to change up they look change up their hair do this and this and this to be mm-hmm. more accepted by mainstream society when really we should be allowed to exist just the way we are this young lady lady has built up her own audience over the years right being it she's like not some fucking nobody that you're right. trying to put on out of nowhere like right. she's on love and hip-hop miami because of her name even i heard of a shit right. <laughs> i came from the fucking backwoods so right. it's not like she People was a like no damn body right, right. Now. and she said you know where are the girls who look like me in entertainment why would i want to change up the way i look when being me is how i got here So I'm really appreciative of the conversation because honestly, a lot of people are just straight up ignorant about it and don't even know that they are ignorant. And maybe some of y'all are watching Love and Hip Hop Miami now going, wow, you know, I didn't realize this about Afro Latinas or I didn't know that it was this and this and this and are getting a chance to learn something. I think this is a side of Love and Hip Hop that we rarely get to see because most of us are not really learning anything from these programs. No shade. That is very true. But yeah, fuck young Hollywood and everybody who thought they could defend him and everybody who thinks anything like him. And I am just so all about this Amara La Negra girl. I, she's fucking popping. She's everything. And it's rare that somebody on a reality TV show will never say anything that I disagree with. I literally never disagree <laughs> with this girl. I love the scenes with her mama and everything where she's like, oh, mama, you know, I got to I I gotta keep it cute. I can't be eating everything. I gotta fit in these outfits. And her mama was like, okay, but some rice. Right. Like you Okay. Okay, you don't that's eat a lot. Pathetic. Right. You're just gonna have some plantains okay, then. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna eat anyway. I just think she's so cute and all that. So fuck people who are trying to tell black girls that they need to change in order to be successful. It's just not the truth and we should be allowed space to exist the way we are. So Because he would have never told Veronica to take down that weekend. Never. Never would have said so. Look, the trying to change the whole look. twisty braid thing that you got going Although on. Although she back literally there. looks like countless other stars, right? Nobody like ever. S- nobody says, "Hey, you look like the nine thousandth clone of one of the Kardashians." <laughs> <laughs> 
pick one. Like you look like one of them. Like all of these bitches are cookie cutter and look exactly the same. And you want to tell this girl who has her own sound connected to her culture and her own look. And she represents so many other Afro Latina girls who don't see themselves represented. They only ever see mixed or white Latinas represented in media. And you, and your solution to her is to loosen up the hair and, and do be more Beyonce, less Macy Gray, bitch. <laughs> you sound Kiss like eyes. so old and dumb and completely you sound ignorant, oblivious. And just, I mean, aside from the fact that that is just an ignorant, racist, completely horrible fucking thing to say to someone, especially to a woman of color outside of that, just from the, the, the viewpoint of someone who is operating in the industry like that, you're looking at someone who has an audience who doesn't look like everybody else. Right. You motherfuckers be waiting for like the quote unquote underdog to start popping to then try and make 1800 more of them. <laughs> right. Rather than investing in the person who's already unique in themselves, right. who serves an amazing purpose in that they can you know represent loads of girls loads of other women that look like them that don't have representation now she got like i think she got a, like a bmg deal or something and yeah. a whole bunch of other shit is popping for her and she's lit and now i'm i can't wait to see all of the other brown skin latina girls that are going to be popping in right and stuff because like like industries producers all of these big suits and wearing niggas like they wait for motherfuckers it's just the same way like i said i can't wait for black panther to do all of these crazy numbers so i can see some more black superhero movies oh i'm, I'm based sure they on come, man. real comics or based on original screenplays or whatever it's gonna like it's going to affect like the bigger picture and stuff like that and you could have been sensible enough to be like you popping like you and this fro and this brown skin we're gonna you right. be lit. I'm gonna put a crown on top of that bitch it ain't nobody else out here looking like you and making the music you do so let's make you pop it but no you wanna make her like everybody else why so she can flop <laughs> Her uniqueness is what draws you to her. The fact that she don't look like every other bitch out here. I hope she gets on a track with Cardi. I really do. Oh my goodness. That would be I hope she get a verse or do the hook or something like that on a song with Cardi. Labels probably won't let it happen, but that would be dope. They so, might as well. They're almost sisters. I'm done. Fuck Young Hollywood. And that's it. All right. So. I think that's enough show, right? Ooh, over two hours. Yeah, that's plenty. So, uh, thanks for checking out this week's episode of The Read. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr at This Is The Read. Kid Fury, any news this week? Um. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much to everybody for hanging out, listening. Hope that you're having a great new year and you're productive and sexy. All right. Do we have an acronym? We're just going to go home. L. Oh, my God. Did you see Blackish? Oh, my gosh. Wait, did I watch the last? No, I missed it. Oh. <laughs> wait. <laughs> no, the last week is when she went back Bo to is, work. Bo is starting to. She, Bo is uh, in some online mommy groups now. Okay. Oh, and she was. Okay, I saw the preview for it. She was cussing them out and talking about <laughs> you. Ruby and your... shines once again throughout this episode. She is everything, okay, but I'm it's a good it one. It was one of the ones where they had an ad integrated, like they had the whole "My Black is Beautiful" okay campaign. But it was really well done the way they integrated that conversation into the show with Dre and his coworkers. But anyway, since you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it for you. Okay, the acronym is L. C P A. Leave something something.